Hey, you. Thanks for visiting me on this special night. I'm ready to give you a really great time. But first, a few ground rules. Just so you know, you're consenting to adult themes and language, so be advised. Besides, <laughs> I love it when you talk dirty. Your safe word is spoiler. And there may be many thrown out there tonight, so don't be scared. Well, if I'm being honest, I love it when I can feel the terror pulsing inside you. Last rule, the opinions and anything that's said tonight, it's just between you and me. We won't bring the real world into this. It doesn't reflect on anyone else. Does that sound like fun to you? If so, give me your hand and I'll be your guide. Here, I won't even make the strap on your wrist that tight. Trust me, it's Valentine's Day. So just lie back and I'll make you forget everything. Enjoy the ride. Good evening, my lovely, beautiful, gorgeous friends, and welcome to a very special episode of Dub Talk, the podcast where a group of heroines get together and talk about the latest in English anime dubs. Tonight, it's Valentine's Day, the one day of the year where I open up the cage doors in the dungeon and invite my best beloved to join me in the depths of Otome Hell to celebrate the fact that, well... <laughs> If it's not romantic, it might as well be weird. Just like last year, Stephanie, Megan, and Noah are here unchained. And we will be reviewing the dub of my personal worst reverse harem ever, Amnesia, the 2013 series that was licensed and dubbed by Sentai Filmworks in 2014. To be fair. I never belonged in the cage for this one because I have seen this show before. <laughs> I am good. Like, I don't mind I don't know if much. you can Lila, hear me. That's even worse. That means that you have seen this show twice as many times as the rest of us. So, your point? I don't know if you can hear me or if you even care. <laughs> I don't know if you would listen to an otaku's prayer. <laughs> yes, I know I'm just a Fujo. <laughs> And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. <laughs> God damn but it. I'm gonna keep it going till we get a strike. God help the Otaku <laughs> subject to oh, God. All right. This anime has Jesus, see, I'd see, like see, to say that the, no. these chains are very high quality. I'm very impressed that you know your chains very well. No, no, no. See, Aren't they? I got them just for you guys. See, the difference between last year and this year is the fact that I've seen Amnesia. Last year I didn't see Brothers The Call difference and then between I got last year and this year was last year we actually reviewed a half decent anime. Even That's if it did involve true. even if it did <laughs> it did involve the wet dreams of everybody in the state of Alabama. <laughs> <sighs> Roses are well, red, I, violets are blue. My name is Megan, and I have a chocolate salty surprise for you. And I've got a parfait for all of you. And I've drugged them, too. All right, let's get this started. <laughs> all right. Wrong boy. Well, he doesn't cook wait. that one. No, no, no. We, wait. I'm disappointed. David Wall's not involved in this. <laughs> I know, Damn right? I wow. Okay. Now I'm just imagining it, and I'm like, fuck, what a fucking missed opportunity. By the way, can there. the title card to this just not be, like, an actual amnesia title card, but that screen cap from Token Rambu Season 2 of Matt Shipman's character with the giant, like, no. sake tray, like, no. talking it back? No, that's, no, right that now. that's, that's where that's I'm, I'm trying to be romantic. You've already fucked my phone sex voice. <laughs> now I'm never going to get work. Jesus Christ. Can you, before we get Look, too far, can you tell us what the show is about, please? I definitely can. Because we forgot. So, Amnesia. 
Yeah, I thought you might have. Amnesia is based on the game Amnesia Memories no brought shit. to you by the same <laughs> Shut up. fine people who introduced us to Brothers Conflict and Diabolic Lovers, both favorites of the podcast and fans, I'm sure. But Amnesia came before all of them. Make your jokes. And it's the one I'm sure most of us would like to forget. For those of you who haven't played the game or seen the anime, here's a quick rundown of the plots from what I can remember. Mm. Our main female protagonist, who is so important, she doesn't even get a name. Her name is Snossage Seriously. Now. Jesus Christ. What? Her Let name her is Snossage. <laughs> let Gigi finish. Why did you name her Snossage? What? Please let Gigi finish her summary. Yes, mom. What? Please. Yes, mother. Thank you. Seriously, her listed name is not Snossage. <laughs> Fuck, I can't even say it. But heroin wakes up on August 1st and has no idea where she is, what her surroundings are, what is going on, or even who she is. I keep saying sausage. <laughs> you let Megan get your head, Gigi. Now you fucking Christ. It. She is greeted by a spirit named Orion, who tells her that he somehow oh, collided God. with her soul and is now stuck in her subconscious. In order for <laughs> the heroine to get him out of her head, literally, she has to regain her memories and return to her normal life. However, there are four boys dressed in dominatrix gear who you can tell apart by predominant color. <laughs> Other than black and playing card suit, who all seem to have a place in her life and her heart, but which boy belongs in her true reality? But which one who can belongs help in our snossage gain her memories back? Stop it! And will she will she live long enough to retrieve them? Let's find out before we all get amnesia and forget this anime adaptation ever exists. I know pictures of snossage no, Chan. It's too late for that. I've already got now. For all you people watching right there, you may remember last year for our valentine's episode i got schnockered up on uh chocolate rum this time i've got something even better i have made up a homemade white russian made with one part vodka one part kalua and two parts cream on ice and i have doubled the dosage for extra flavor now I now here's say, the I thing thought one though. dose was victor's cup <laughs> <gasps> ouch no 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 now here's the thing <laughs> After in no, here's the thing. After incidents has happened last time when someone got really drunk off of stuff, we did institute a no drinking rule. However, thanks, Sneebs. We're <laughs> don't throw them under the bus. But, <laughs> but this is only a one time thing. So long as nobody loses their goddamn control in their minds, Noah. Meg, M N Lilac, Lilac, or whatever your name is. I have never <laughs> been so drunk as to you know. Uh, make up any problems that needed to be edited out. Come on, you, you, now. you want you want to talk on. about the ending of Brothers did. Conflict last year and how go, you were just. I loved when I got face? that text an hour after we had wrapped, and it was just a video of Noah, and I was like, "Should I play this? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sending? If you watch this video, Noah? you <laughs> must get drunk in seven days. Gigi, Gigi, <laughs> I am insulted that you would think that I would send you that. Ooh. I mean. <laughs> You wouldn't be the first. Oh so. I am a classier individual than I'm that. pretty sure I if you saw that, she would want to have amnesia. You were also drunk at the time. You were also <laughs> drunk at the time. Excuse I me, am I was also... fucking sober last year. No, I Fight meant me. Noah. I meant Noah was drunk at the time, not you. I am also the only one, and this goes for the show too, who happens to have actually gotten married. So, you know what? Classierness, okay? We get classiness up I'm in this house. I'm still bragging. Saying, you were drunk. Listen, y'all can fucking drink, and you can drink with your fucking wife, and I'm going to be here on Valentine's Day probably swiping on Tinder. <laughs> my so Valentine's before we talk Day about how my pathetic my to be life fair, is. Hey, hey, to be fair, I'm spending my light, my Valentine's Day with three <laughs> losers who have worse prospects than all of us. Fair enough. Who? <laughs> Andrew Roots and Jet. Are you, oh, are you recording? <laughs> I didn't want you to actually name them. <laughs> they already know we're making fun of ourselves in that episode. Oh, God. All right. Fair enough. You so, can cut uh, out right, Roots and Jet's name, but you can keep Andrew. <laughs> speaking speaking of people who have worse prospects than us, um, didn't some people with worse prospects go and make a dub for this series, Gigi? Thank you. They definitely. They definitely did. Um, because this came out in 2014, we're not going to do predictions, except for the fact that I'm going to talk about David Wald later, because now that somebody said that, it's a fucking missed opportunity. <laughs> I'm 
Every um, job that involves somebody getting roofied without David Wells is a missed opportunity. In <laughs> it really is. Anytime what's that? there's something what's that involves that, a lock is... and shackles and David Wald is not involved, uh, my life kind of hurts. What's no, that, no, no, no. Timmy? No, I have Nossie to ask just the got question. herself roofied. <laughs> no, 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 I have to ask the question because I don't know if this finally happened. Is David Wald somewhere in your voice actor reverse harem now? Yes, he is at number um, oh, seven. Yeah, okay. we confirmed that back in the school live episode. Fulfilling the daddy king. No, no, no. At the, during the school live <laughs> episode, he, he was in the harem, just didn't have a place yet. Justin Pate has now been demoted. Aww. He is on the wait list. He's on the wait list. And David, <laughs> oh David God. Wald has taken his place at number seven. Okay. I'm sorry. You've That's been so. voted I off I the pass. harem. I just didn't know he had any place. Okay, we've been dragging the Interon for too fucking long. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about our, our um, the wonderful people who were selected to direct and write this oh, shit show. I mean, this show. And by oh, selected, um, we, of course, mean dragged and locked in the booth. Hey, they got a paycheck, so they really can't complain. My guess is that when um, they walk at somewhere in, like, Sentai Filmworks, they're all sitting there looking at it going, nose goes. <laughs> I bet they didn't even, like, remember that they did this show. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> How <laughs> many amnesia puns can I make in one episode? A lot. Not enough. So the the <laughs> director forget. for this lovely Otome adaptation is one of two who directed everything at Sentai during this period. It's not Christopher Ayers, so it must be Kyle, Kyle Colby, Colby Jones. Jones. Dun, dun, dun. And our writer is also Kyle Colby Jones, along with Mr. George Maley. Mally? I don't Man know. Manly? Mally. Molly? All right. <laughs> Not Molly. Mo I heard the Mo Motley crew with my vampire hearing. <laughs> God damn it. So if you have not seen a show that KCJ, Mr. Kyle Colby Jones, has directed, he has directed <laughs> Going Back in the Day Air. He's directed Himoto, Umaru-chan, and Don Machi, Is It Wrong to Pick Up a Girl in a Dungeon? Yes. Since it's Valentine's Day is the only time I will say no. no. <laughs> um, as for our writing team, uh, George has written uh, episodes of Dramatical Murder. Oh, that explains a lot. It explains Somehow it explains a lot. a lot. Food Wars and another Otome adaptation, Hakuoki. Okay. And KCJ has written Chihaya Furu, Food Wars, and Monster Moose Man. That also explains a few things. Fuck that. Well, to be fair, he, he's got at least a partial writing credit in almost everything that's come out in the last four years. Yeah, I just picked whatever I felt like picking off the list. I mean, this could be so, the Kyle uh, Kobe Jones episode if we really wanted it to be. Just everybody is just everybody is like everybody's played by Kyle Kobe Jones, even the girls. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, yes, this, that may have been a better. That's choice. my predictions. Heroin oh. played by Kyle Kobe Jones. <laughs> Excuse uh, me, Sawa played by Kyle Kobe Jones. Uh, pink haired girl played by Kyle Kobe Excuse Jones. Excuse me, you just called her name wrong. Her name is Snossage. <laughs> Anyway. Can you, okay, okay. So before we talk about directing, can you please tell everybody why you named her fucking Snossage? <laughs> because, first of all, one, when I picked, it was the first thing that popped into my head was I just thought of, like, I don't know, Snossage sounds really good. And, and what then, does that say about your head? I don't know. <laughs> Mostly my head is, like, anime bullshit, shit posting, and hockey, and dogs. <laughs> and and snossages are dog uh, treats. They <laughs> are. I didn't know they were a thing. They yes, are legit that, a thing. I thought I was making up the word. I, I, yeah, I, know. Like, no. No, no, I know. I know what a snossage like, is. Oh my god. I mean, I mean, I this girl's got. The... <laughs> I mean, this girl has the agency of a snossage. All she's there <laughs> to do is be a treat for these horny, horny boys. Uh, and I mean, uh, was a reason. I mean, <laughs> okay. I mean, oh. like, what else are we gonna call her, Brett? Let's call it Beggin Strips. <laughs> no, Beggin Strips are awful. Her name is Snossage. If you get it wrong, I will kick you in your tiny Smurf balls. <laughs> Every time you don't call her Snossage, you have to drink. Yes. So I can drink to uh, that. <laughs> who no, wants to be the sacrificial me. lamb to talk about? All right. Beggin's like, I got this. Stuff fucking sucks. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Speaking of Snossages. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think at one point I asked in our group chat, it's good to see Sentai Filmworks giving, uh, being so diverse with their casting. I never knew they casted trees with how stiff some of these performances were. Oh. 
I was hoping what you meant by bad. that. Like, I was hoping that was a typo. <laughs> no, I was being dead serious. No, Megan does not make typos that like, easily. Yes, I no. do. Have you seen me type? I can't fucking spell. I've got a Florida education. Oh. And I also can't do math that well. I say this with some, as somebody with a bachelor's degree in humanities, an English-based oh major. No, but, like, this is bad. Like, I get that this show is not God's shining example to the anime community. <laughs> I mean, not everything can be dramatical murder. Um, to which, that had a better dub than this fucking did. I'm no. actually yes, it did. Yes, it did. No. Yes, no. It did. No. Fucking no, fight me. It fucking did. At oh, least here, here. in that show, they could, it was consistently awful. Like, they forget characters' names in this. There are bad writing. Yep. There are, no, no, like, no. But, but you have your fucking cheap-ass <laughs> Seth Rogen over here. You know what? I would take cheap-ass Seth Rogen over some of the bullshit in this show. No, I'm good. Like, like, like there are points like, where you? I'm like, you half of you are good actors. What happened here? <laughs> There's a lot of, like, bad writing errors. There are t they called Toma tomorrow at one point. I didn't even catch they that. They did. I didn't like, either. Okay, it's when they're playing air hockey and Sawa is, like, introducing the teams. And she's like, it's Shin and Tomo. And I was like, are you fucking Wait, kidding me oh, right yeah, now? Yeah, now I remember. I, I, well, I rewatched the show like, today. Like, so. yes, okay, like, yes, there like, are. But there, there are though, mistranslations. There are, like, and... there are times when I'm watching this where the people who are acting this show come off as so disinterested in what they're doing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. look. At, 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 like, and I said this about Monster Musume too, which is another dub that I have like a lot of problems with beyond the show itself being a garbage sexist trash file. Um, like, there are times in the show where it's just like i did not believe any of these guys wanted to like fuck me and that's you a, sound like me and that's a problem <laughs> i'm learning from Isn't the a best good thing megan yeah no not when okay no not when you're watching a reverse Listen. harem when you're watching yeah. a reverse harem you believably want as a girl you are supposed to yes. stick yourself in snossage's shoes yeah, I'm that's sure. it's true. That's why she doesn't have a real name. Like, that's why she doesn't have a real name. That's why, like, if I played the game myself, I would nickname myself fucking Snossage Chan. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is the reason why I think Diabok Lovers is already better than Amnesia, because their main character has a fucking name. Everything's better. Right? Everything's better than Amnesia. Fucking, like... <laughs> no, oh, not everything. Not that's everything. a heart. Okay, no, that's true. That's true. Not I mean, everything. like... It, it I don't know. Fucking Final Fantasy VII exists. <laughs> um... Um, I, 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 I'm not even sorry, Hardy. Um, I don't know. It just, it's, it's just, this is not a good dub. Like, I don't care what anyone says. Like, the fact that they, one, decided to dub this stupid ass show in the first place. <laughs> like, there are, like, I believe, I'm a proponent that everything, most things should be dubbed. But there are some things that deserve to be locked down at the bottom of the well and never come out and see the light of God day. It. It'll just reincarnate Listen, and come back anyway. Stop talking about me. I love you, Gigi. I would never push you down the well. <laughs> but it comes down to the golden yes. rule of dubbing. If you're going to make a dub and you're not going to make it a good dub, at the very least, make it an interestingly bad dub because nothing is worse for you, our ears like, than a totally <laughs> blasé dub. That is the worst thing you can yeah, possibly I mean, make. Yeah, I mean, like, he, like right. just pull a Dave Trosco. I mean, here's the other thing, too, you got to think about. Like, you, you got to consider that there are shows that we've obviously seen we've talked about before where the show is bad but the dub is still good and they don't have to like gag dub or anything like that first love monster perfect example of a show that got a i haven't seen first love monster first of all and you're all the better for it thank oh, you oh that's <sighs> but that'll be uh, next valentine's episode <laughs> no we're not doing that. it again we no. do it again <laughs> no no but my my point is is like right they don't they, it, it could be a bad show but I guess we'll segue into how I feel about it, actually. I didn't mind the dub at all, honestly. I didn't really pick up on many writing problems or directing or casting or performance issues. I actually, for me, who has seen the show before, compared to Megan and Noah, I actually think the dub makes the show more itself more tolerable. It's one of those cases where it's like, the show is bad. The mm. show is very bad. It starts out decent, and then you get to a point where it's like, shit just hits the fan. And, like, when I... That's when the good part Here's starts. the thing. I watched this show, like, when it first came out, simulcasting-wise, like, f what, four years ago now? 2013. Five years so, ago yep. Five now? years ago. Five years ago. 
And I wasn't, obviously, a lot can happen in five years. And um, when I first started watching the show back then, I was like, starting out, I'm like, okay, this is actually pretty good. I'm not, I, I like it. It's not too bad. And then when that shit hits the fan, I'm like, okay, this is terrible. But now, now I'm just like, this is actually funny as all fuck. <laughs> like, because I've hung out with Gigi too fucking long, I think. But... <laughs> you tainted well, I, another I, one, Gigi. I, I'm job. still safe. My my ultimate harem is literally like 50 swords <laughs> turned into pot dudes. No, but the point I'm getting across is because I've seen the show before, mm-hmm. obviously I've seen the Japanese. Gigi can also agree with me. I know she can. The Japanese is terrible. Oh god, Awful. no! I wouldn't have ever finished this show if I had to watch it in Japanese. Yeah, and, like, I was I on don't the... mind watching subs. Yeah. I was on but, the like, phone with Megan like maybe a half hour before we started. Recording when I was episode. still sober. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, I probably would have like killed. I would have probably murdered everything if I watched the Japanese." Like, yeah, I would have just stopped watching. Yeah, you would have been done. Like, like I watched almost every episode of Dramatical Murder in Japanese. Yeah. And, like, that is arguably a worse anime in terms of, like, production value yes. and stuff. Oh, definitely. But I would still rather watch that dub than it, watch this again. It, it was I wouldn't entertaining. say that much. I wouldn't go that far. Because Dramatical Mo- I, Murder was boring as all fuck. <laughs> Dramatical Murder was boring. Dramatical Murder was hey, fuck, no, it was not it that was, bad. It was, but I couldn't even get past nice... episode two because it was so boring. I somehow got through it because we it's had to you're weak. Episode. No, it was but because if you don't have a... <laughs> Well, Gigi, we kind of talked about this during the I Know Kasabi episode in that you're not really a cyberpunk fan, are you? No. Exactly. So, Dramatical Murder had a lot of that going. So, I'm like, okay, I don't care at all about the characters in Dramatical Murder, but I'm into the sort of cyberpunk future, let's get raped by the dog sort of mentality <laughs> they got going on here. Okay, first of all, wow. one, you do not get raped by the dog. Wow. Okay, fine, fine, whatever. Greg no, Ayers, dog, all, one, nice to blow well, you, Greg growly was noises. Not the dog, the... first of all. That was first David all, Wald. Wald. First of all. Wait a minute, what? Yes. Yes. I know, I, I got confused. Excuse I, me, right, there's an anime where no, David Wald no, makes blowjob okay, noises? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, look. Gigi, I thought it was look. David Matranga blowjob noises. Th- that is correct. Okay, first, okay, no, look. The robot does. No, 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 no. David Wald, David Matranga blows you, but David Wald eats you out. This is getting way off track. Wow, happy Valentine's Day to me. Okay. <laughs> no, no, so... no, 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 but cause we keep going off track. My thoughts here. I... I actually didn't have much issues with the dub in general, honestly. I thought the direction was... To be fair, it's not the best thing that Kyle Kobe Jones has directed. (laughs) To be fair. Um, But it's also not the worst thing I think he's directed. Even... I don't think... I don't think I run into... I don't think I run into a show where I can deem it the worst thing he's directed, but this might come close to it. I I can say this is the worst that I've heard... From him so far that I've heard. But, But my thing is, is like... As someone who's previously watched the show, and I know what I get myself, like what I'm getting myself back into when I rewatch it, mm-hmm. the dub made it more tolerable for me. Where there's some issues with writing, yeah, I mean, let's talk about Milady. Um, <laughs> but Milady, it's more of a directing thing than a writing thing, I think. Well, it, it could. be I think both. it was supposed to be a joke, and it didn't work. It right, did, yeah. because of the way it was directed. No, because probably the way it was written. Mm. Could be both. Could be both. I can. I can literally see it being written out as like because she says it's not even like milady. She's like milady or something. Something like that. But she tries to don an accent for it. Yeah, that's for, that's what's the why. Yeah. Because she but, is. She, but because she's British, obviously. No, she's not. But but I would think she's Polish. Jesus Christ. Oh God. <laughs> you <laughs> no but that's going in the next highlight reel <laughs> <laughs> no but anyway um to me the dub is tolerable but oh, probably more only because the dub i i like the show a bit more because of the dub it's one of those situations for me but probably only because i have seen the show before so again right. i know what i'm getting myself into i have seen it. i know what goes on in the damn thing right so it, and it's I, fine with me honestly and i'm like sort of in the same camp because I have seen the show before and the show in Japanese is hot fucking garbage. Whatever year I watched it in, it was my worst anime of the year and it will remain to be my worst reverse harem slash Otome adaptation I have ever seen. Oh, I can agree with that too. (laughs) 
It is just god awful in the way and its pacing and the way that the episodes are structured. Like there's nothing good about the anime as a as a whole other than there are hot guys in it and sometimes stupid shit happens which makes my life. Right. Um but about the directing and the writing, I mean, there are so many errors in this. Like, just as someone who has played the game and who has seen it before, just getting the names wrong. I mean, come on. You can totally reshoot that. You can totally do it. Um, They call the big guy at the end of the anime, they call him Neil. Now, granted, that was at first a crunchy roll error in the subtitles when they called the big god guy Neil. It's not Neil. It's something else. Like it sounds Nicole. like the dude from One Direction's name, Nile? but it's not Neil. Nile, Nile. maybe. Let me look that up. I don't want to mispronounce it and make it even worse. No, um, no, calling... no. The One Direction kid is Nile. Okay. So calling Toma Tomo, I mean, you can fix that. Um, the lip flaps in this. I did and notice the that. way the, the way the words moments. match were was very poor. Um, nobody knows what the fuck Kent's name is. Kento, Kembo, <laughs> Kento, Kenta, Kent. Nobody knows what his name is because everybody calls Kembo him something Clark. different. Um, I don't think in the casting that there were was a lot of chemistry between the characters. Like the casting for. 70% of it I don't know where it came from and it just it didn't work for me there's just a lack of emotion in the performances very strange choices um, and as for the writing it was just so boring they could have done so much more they could have trashed this like more blood <laughs> They could have trashed it like more blood. Now, granted, this was made before. three years before. And I don't know if Sentai was maybe willing to take a chance on a dub like that. But they could have gag dubbed it like ghost stories. <laughs> and I would have been okay with that. Like, it was just so close to the original Japanese and so boring. Because the show is boring. And it's also very complicated and hard to figure out if you've never played the game and have no idea what's going on. And all of a sudden, like, shit's not making sense. And that doesn't even follow the story of the fucking so, game. So basically kind of what you're saying, it's a faithful adaptation. But because the show itself is kind of boring to begin with, it makes it kind of makes the dub suffer a bit. Exactly. Like, I just, I think that it could, they could have had more fun with it. Yeah. And to be fair, on the Blu ray, there is a special feature called Lost Diary Entries, which is basically Snossage saying fake entries in her diary. And one of them is like, Today I had a sleepover with Sawa, and it was so much fun. We ran around in our underwear, and there was a pillow fight with feathers <laughs> flying everywhere. And all of a sudden, we got a little close, and then. Oh, oops, my popcorn went off. I'll have to finish this later. Like it was just it was hysterical. Nice. And I don't know if she, I don't know if she wrote that or if they wrote that. I would rather then, her have gotten together with Sawa. Honestly, I know, that'd right? be great. Honestly. And like Shin even comes in at some points and Shin is funny in it. So I'm just like I think maybe if they would have taken that chance and done something yeah. more, it would have been it could have been great for a shithole anime. But all of the, the bad things that I said about it, either me playing the game or me watching the dub still made the second time around watching this more tolerable yeah. than the first time, yeah. which was complete and utter, utter awfulness. Um, and I don't know. Do we think it's so? It's in the territory of it's so bad it's funny no. or it's so bad it's good? Noah, what no. do you think? The show itself is does uh, occasionally drop into the realms of so bad that it's hysterical, but the dub okay, itself yeah. does not get that. Uh, aside from like maybe a few instances where like Milady or um, I think uh, the uh, the route where uh, Waka, the boss character, gets incredibly gay for some reason. Like okay, that, I had I problems did with not that. understand that. That, I well, well the idea is that, that if we'll I'm not mistaken, he like has a different personality while in each arc, and I'm assuming that's how he was in the game too. Yes, we'll get to him in a couple. Yeah, of we'll minutes. get to him in a bit. So, but basically, the this whole dub uh, was made in that period of time where Sentai was downplaying their dubbing work. They weren't mm -hmm. dubbing a yeah. lot of stuff, and they weren't like having a lot of big push uh, promotions for what they were putting out. I'm glad they didn't do a, a gag dub for this because. Um, there is not a whole lot of anime adaptations of Otome games that gets licensed over here. At least there wasn't back in 2013, 2014 when yeah. the show first came out. Like, all the shows that 
have been adapted, we have probably already covered on this podcast itself. A lot, yeah. Versus, mm -hmm. yeah, versus the one shit Quillian uh, key ad uh, visual novel adaptations, which there are a lot of out there. So I'm glad that they actually went with, uh, like, tr they tried to make it dramatical. They tried to make it, uh, they tried to take it seriously, but yeah, they had no passion for this at all. And in every character's line, I'm not gonna write. I'm not gonna chalk it up to the writing. Like I know you guys say that the writing's not good. The writing is just fine because most of the dialogue in this is characters spouting exposition to the main character, which is in turn supposed to be exposition for us, the viewers, to understand what is going on in the story of the background of the whole thing. Right. It all comes down to the direction. All of these characters, all these actors were given okay writing material, but they had no passion for it. It's like it's like you said, Megan, I, as the you know straight hetero male person out here, did not feel like they were trying to swoon. And, you know, they, they weren't trying to Woo. get my blood going or anything. They weren't trying to crank my motor. Here's, here's my thing, though. What it comes down to at the end of the day is the show itself. Pro because they were trying to make a straight adaptation of for a dub of this show, the dub suffered because of it. Like, you can I you don't... can say it's the writing, you could say it's directing and the performances, and they don't put passion into it. However, mm -hmm. if we take into consideration the kind of show this is, how mm -hmm. this show was executed in Japan, and let's, because we were talking about Japan a few minutes ago, we don't know what restrictions Sentai was put under when they got yes. this well, show. Even if there are plenty of, but we've talked before about okay series, like even bad, actively bad series that got good performances. Because, and I think we, um, I don't remember who talked about this, but it was someone at A-Fest who was leading a panel said, mm -hmm. every series we dub, even if it's the worst series out there, is going to be at least Megan one Shipman. person's favorite series. Was that Megan Shipman? Yeah. This show, somewhere out there in the vast wilderness of Wyoming or something, <laughs> considers Amnesia to be their favorite anime that has ever been created. Yeah. And that one person still deserves the same effort of, you know, consistent quality and emotional, I don't know, as well as, like, uh, emotional Well then, dramatic well, then let's go, I can't let's go along that similar vein, then. If you think that they didn't put passion behind the, these performances, what about that person in Wyoming? Maybe they think that this dub is phenomenal to them, and they put a lot of passion in the roles. Well, they're an idiot then. No, oh, you're just no, not. No, 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 you're just no. You may hate this dub. It's the same idea as when you were talking to Megan Shipman about Pandora. You may dislike the dub. Somebody else is going to love the ever loving shit out of it. And that's what makes different. a podcast like this, where we all have varied opinions, yeah. so important yeah. to be put on the internet. Yes. And you know what else is important? Us Moving giving on. our opinions about the actual characters. Moving on. So right. <laughs> let's God. let's let's gossip, girls. Let's talk I'm about let's Sawa go. and Mine, who are Oh uh, God, not Mine. <laughs> Fuck Mine, <laughs> who are stuff <laughs> who are sausages, best. best friends. Mine and I use that wrong. term loosely. Okay, Ugh. so uh Sawa is the one who wears the checkerboard print and the green belt and has a ponytail and Mine is I like to refer to as a little pink haired bitch. So I mean, she is a bitch, let's be fair. <laughs> in one she time is a bitch. in one time like she's like, You broke up with Iki? Can I go date him now? <laughs> oh Right? And then bitch fucking ass I him out. What a stupid bitch. Like that was she had one of those lines, one of those little deliveries that was actually so bad it was good. She was like, ha ha, thanks. Yeah, well, let me tell honestly. you who plays them before we start to talk about yes. their performances. Okay, yes, so Sawa is played by Allison Sumrall. Oh, good and Jesus. Mine is played by Molly Searcy. So Allison Sumrall has played, okay, I'm probably saying this wrong because I didn't watch the show. Is it Mila from Monster Moose? Mia Snake Ho. Oh god. Is that that's who it right. is? Okay. Yeah. She played uh Miki and Say I Love You, and this will come up later. She played Rachel's mom in Red Garden. Remember that, kids. Oh. Okay. Okay. And uh I think Ma Gigi, I think you and I are like the only two people who have actually seen Red Garden. Excuse you, I've seen part of it. I just haven't finished it. What's yet. a Red Garden? Is it what happens I between your it. legs when you have your period? Whoa! I was just gonna say it's code for god fucking period. And uh Molly Searcy has played uh Centurea in Monster Musume. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Queen in No Game No Life and Machi Ando in When Supernatural Battles Become Commonplace. So I have really never heard any of these people except for Say I Love You and I can't remember her performance in that. Um, but this, I just, why? <laughs> why God? <laughs> Because we because needed you at least one, at up, <laughs> you could, need at least one more hot dog in this sausage. All right, you I could. Can here. Hold on. <laughs> you could, if you wanted some Valley Girls, you could have called me Sentai. Shit. <laughs> I think um, Jamal just called Noah a lady. Whoa. What? So, like Sawa, why, why she called Toma Tomo? Why, 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 why? I kind of almost feel that her voice is too old. But however, she's not as stereotypical as Mine. And then Mine, (laughs) that little pink haired bitch, gets worse and worse as a valley girl as she goes on. I'm sorry, she actually does. And, and I actually it didn't starts mind out, Molly and Monster Musume either, which is sad. Like, it started off tolerable. It started off tolerable. By the time they got to the air hockey match in episode two, I was like, okay, this is getting kind of wonky. She said That's some, how long it took. Well, yeah. And then by the time, like, yep. she starts macking on Iki, I'm like, bitch, <laughs> stop. To, to, <laughs> Number be, one, to be fair to Molly's credit, she's done better after that. <laughs> Has she? Okay, good. Because yes. I to was be just fair, like, are you sure about that? I'm like, sure. I like, I think there is a turning point in the anime where, like, they just decided, "Fuck it, we're doing it live. Let's just go <laughs> full out share her with from Clueless." Pretty much. Like, let's just be Stacy Dash and call it a day. And I was just like, <laughs> "Why does this happen all the time?" Oh, and at then, like, point, are... at one point in her session, she came like 15 minutes late with Starbucks and a little Chihuahua in her purse. Oh my god. Exactly. Like really? I was just like I and I know that there are other characters in this anime who do Mine times twenty. And those are the Heathers who have no eyes and are supposed to do that on purpose. But I was like, if you wanna Yes. That's what their names are. That's what they're called. They are the Heathers. It's Heather one, Heather two, and Heather three. It's in the credits. That, I was going to say, that's not just a reference to an obscure movie. That is actually what they're credited Legit. as. Yeah, the they're, you mean they're credited an, an as obscure the movie that they're, going, that they're currently making a shitty remake of? We're talking about the different bad media here, Megan. We'll talk about that one never. <laughs> but I was, just, I, just like, I was just like, why? So I'm like, maybe they did it on purpose. Ho- I'm hoping. Molly, did you do it on purpose? Please say yes. Probably like, I, I'm going to say that yeah, I'm going to say Molly did it on yeah. purpose because she was told to do so. Because one thing that you have... Okay, we'll talk about the heroine when we get to her. But you had to Take have- a shot! No. Drink. Oh, oh, right, right. No, no, I wasn't talking about uh, Snossage. I was talking about the actual drug. But no. if you insist... Oh, okay. <laughs> I just you could like, say these boys all have a heroin addiction. Oh God. <laughs> Shut the fuck take up. Another, take another shot for that. Um, I'm almost out of vodka. Okay, I'm no, but so, seriously. I'm so critical uh, of Valley Girl accents because I know I have one, and it's very hard for me to get rid of it. So Now, did you watch... Now, Gigi, you watched the dub of uh, My First Girlfriend is a Gal, Of right? course, and Jamie Markey is queen of Valley Girl accents, and she should do them all the time. Yes, she was. I agree. And she was also the focal point of that series. Um, I didn't really get much of a rage over either Molly or Allison's performances in this because they are so not important to the overall plot. Like, this is a 12-episode series where it jumps plot lines every two or three episodes to focus on a different lead male character. The girls are so incidental to the background information that they could practically be painted with no eyes and no face. That's how Like the Heathers! I'm, I mean, I almost didn't want to talk about them, but then once that bitch said Tomo, I was like, no, I have to say something. <laughs> no, no, can I say something? That was... What? Yeah. After doing, after the, um, Monster Musume incident, we'll call it. Oh, God. Where I still want to kick Andrew and his tiny, tiny balls. They were bad! Stop harping. Like, I don't, why would they make this poor girl in this with the pink hair do a valley girl accent? Like, why would you do that? There is nothing in the show denoting that she is, like, from, like, having a, a Kansai dialect or something. Like, Cause fuck she you, that's just why. seems like a normal girl who rolled out of her Hot Topic one afternoon to come work <laughs> at this cafe of other Hot Topic <laughs> 
hijacked. And then the lesbian with the ponytail and two belts, who's like a minor version of Kento's belt 27 belt fetish. Um, like, they were bad. I, I know that these two actors, well, okay, are arguably for Pinky. Um, I, I, I'm not sold on her in the two shows that I've watched her in. I do not like her in. And Allison Sumerall is okay to me. Um, they, like, literally, you could have just had them have, like, two just normal background girl voices. Like, they were both just very jarring. They, here's my thing. They were jarring, and in the case of Mine, it got obnoxious, I'm not gonna lie. But I actually do like Allison Summerall as Sua. I'm not gonna lie. You mean Sawa Tomo? Sawa No. (laughs) No, here's the thing. Because, really, Sawa and Mine are part of the exposition dump that you get at points in time and Sawa at least in Sawa's case and Allison Summerall's performance you can tell that Sawa is actually a pretty good friend to um the heroine so (laughs) drink nah that's for no one not me (laughs) I am going to call her the heroine all I fucking please I don't care about snuff she gets testy when she drunk anymore I I'm not drunk at all, actually. <laughs> and I'm on my second can of this. Oh, um, but honestly, I I didn't mind Allison's performance as Su- Sawa at all. Honestly, I think it was mm-hmm. good. It was a good friend counterpart for the heroine, and she is also take no! a shot. She's also her <laughs> main role is not just as the best friend, but as exposition dump, and she does pretty well with that. It's Mine that I have a problem with. Because, similar to Gigi, it was fine at first, and then just started getting a little too much. Got a little too much, and to the point where it was obnoxious. But to be fair, that obnoxious valley girl bitchy personality of hers did make me want to smack her when she was going after Iki. Right. To be fair. So bitch like better that, she, broke, she broke bitch code. You were happy when she was when she ran out of there crying. Yeah, outdoors. exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah, like she was stepping she all could... over the heroine's territory. Like this is my boyfriend. Like why you do this? She she broke the exactly. whole code. Right. And like the performance that Molly gave at that point in time made me like okay, I believe this bitch. She's going after this guy that this girl is seeing. Like, I believe it. There are parts where I believe Molly's performance. It's just, unfortunately, there are parts of the performance that got obnoxious. <laughs> That's the downside. Now, what about the... Now, what about the part where uh, she's having, like, her more heartfelt confession later, and she says, like, I've gotten over it. Like, that part there. Did that sound less um, obnoxious to you guys? No. Eh. It was about the same. Honestly, and it, there were parts of that scene where I almost didn't believe her. Which, to be fair, if mm, if that's a major acting well, crime. no, it's not that. It's like considering the character, I wouldn't be surprised if she attempted to go back after Iki again. To be fair, well, in that universe, everybody was thirsty for Iki because of his special in, brand. In every universe, everyone is thirsty for Iki. There is no they in this be. universe. Noah is thirsty for Iki. He is. Me and Noah gonna <laughs> fight over say. Iki later. Oh no! Noah, do you have anything to say about Mine and Sal uh, before we move to the next? On, only that Allison d- did a good job. She was not obnoxious at all. She had a nice motherly voice with a bit of an energetic mm-hmm. warble in her voice. Um, I will always remember her as the character with the killer robot eyes because everybody's got these weird, like, cyborg-shaped really eyes does. that, like, look like they're gonna kill us, but that's not, that's not Allison's fault. And Molly did perfectly fine in the Valley Girl voice. I don't, I didn't mind it at all. Like, it, there was no level of obnoxiousness that she could get to that could really bug me because she's not really that important except for one arc and only for about yeah. five minutes. So I, I'm kind of surprised that you guys say that you wanted this to be more of a gag dub, but when they give a character kind of a gag voice, you're like, no, this was over the top and well, too much. Well, that's the problem if you're going to play it straight. Everybody has to play it yeah. straight or no or one plays it straight. Or everyone's got to go insane. Yeah. Exactly. That's the problem. Okay. So we'll, pro- we'll probably talk about uh, in a minute here, another character oh, who uh, didn't boy. quite play Talking about playing it area. straight. Ah. Let's talk about Waka, who is like leading Ooh. Snossage. <laughs> I 
can't do it <laughs> on her work voyage aka he's her boss and then we're also going to talk about orion who is oh! who megan was down 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 leading <laughs> fuck it who's leading the heroine through oh sausage <laughs> every time i say sausage i snort <laughs> i'm not a fucking piggy i am not yuri kotsky you keep Hashtag. that up, Megan, and we're going to think of other more obscure, no, not obscure, more, uh, you know, um, snorts. less tasteful words. Heck, cunt. <laughs> Stop it. Hashtag That's getting snorts sensitive. for snossage. <laughs> just, just wait. I've got a list here. I've got a full list of other words that I'm going to call her. All right. Well, Orion guides her on her journey through her mind and through all of her alternate realities trying to find her memories. So that's why we're putting Waka and Orion together. Also the fact that I couldn't stand to talk about Orion by himself. So Waka, the boss, is played by Jay Hickman and Orion Woo-hoo! is played by Shannon, a girl, as opposed to Shannon Reed, who is a boy from Sentai. We can't get those mm-hmm. mixed up. Emmerich. Um, Jay Hickman is Soma's dad, the Dilf in Food Wars. He plays the talking bird in Tomiko Market, and he plays Mythos in Princess Tutu. So he's been around for a very long time. Shannon- Mythos. Muto. It's pronounced Muto. Muto. Whatever. I fucking hate that show. I'm what? the girl who oh hates my Princess God. Tutu. <gasps> I know. Oh we my god. Are no Gigi, is, friends. Gigi is Gigi sleeping in the hallway at AB. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Gigi is Gigi is not a real man. Of course not. Gigi I'm not she's real. got titties. Big ones. She's got really nice titties. Thank you. I know plenty of men who have I know re- plenty of real men who have big titties. I just saw some in a hot tub there. All other right. Day. I um, don't know. You should really be less harsh on yourself. Shannon you Emmerich also has have nice played titties. Tet in No Game, No Life, Baby Ayato from Diabolic Lovers. Oh, yeah. And she also plays Rui Rui Panda in, well, I don't know if it's, that's not the panda. She plays the person, Rui, in Gotcha Man Crowds. Um, so before we start this, let me preface that through every two episodes, aka every route, Waka changes personalities. So yeah. at the beginning, in the first two episodes, he is one way. And then you skip to Shin's route, and he's completely fucking different. And then you skip to Iki's route, and, and he's, he's completely different again. Fucking different. fucking different. I want to say he, this he is to- how it is in the game, but to be fair, I just played Kent's route over the weekend. I didn't play anybody else's, so I can't. I Kent can tell is you a that good boy. He, Kent is a good boy. Kent is um, a good boy. Rub, he, rub, rub, rub. <laughs> so he soft. So, oh god, he, I hit he deserves that to eat that buckle. sausage. Oh god, damn. he deserves the big Tolber oh sausage. Tolber sausage. Tolber sausage. Stop it. Stop it. Blending episodes together. So I'm sorry. I just like the with, S and blend S sense for sausage. Stop. Fuck <laughs> Megan, Megan, no. help me out. Smile. Sweet. Sister. Sadistic. Surprise. Service. Snossage! I hate everyone right now. Um, Megan, we should... I mean, sorry. Gigi, we should kick Megan and no, I'll just finish this up ourselves. No! I'm having fun! Megan, (laughs) come here, my good friend Megan. We're going bar hopping across Grand Haven. (laughs) Christ. Okay! So... So, like, I'll I... be there in your dreams, Noah. Oh, God. Wow. Anyway, Every night in your dreams. Stop it. Stop it. We need to get going. We're already almost an hour in. And we're barely getting into character. I haven't now. even talked about a boy yet. So, like. Orion's here, so. Well, Orion <laughs> doesn't count as anything. Stop it. So. What are you saying about Kyle? Are you saying Kyle? Who the fuck is Kyle? <laughs> Kyle <laughs> Kyle <laughs> Stop. We're never going to get this done. Okay. There's and That's there's what less she characters said. this time around than there was Brothers Conflict last year. Stop <laughs> it! I'm gonna kill you all! Clearly, we all right. love you. clearly, so, clearly you Hardy was the glue holding this family together. Fucking Fuck hell. you. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so, I, I thought that Jay Hickman did really well during some incantations, incarnations of Waka. Um, like... He was good at the beginning, like the militant one was really good, and then the one, the one where he didn't say much was pretty good. Um, but when he got to that flamboyant one, ooh, girl, oh I was having fucking Chris flashbacks from Yuri on Ice, and I was not in a happy place. It was kind of jarring. Oh. It was too it, much. It was and fun, I, but it was jarring. 
like I, for my people because I mostly hang out with girls and gays. Like I just felt that it was not a. I didn't. I couldn't. You think I'll it was say, too yeah. I'll say for you, it's it's kind of borderline offensive. Yes. It's, yes. It's borderline offensive. It's if if, and I'll I'll kind of step in at least for Waka, um, if Ngaro Roots can call out Vic for doing the like slightly racist like old Chinese guy boys. I'm going to call it out here. Like, guys, you can have gay characters who don't sound like that. Even if it's in the game, it doesn't mean the game is right. Like, I think this is one thing that you could stand to change or tone down. You could have done other things to show that he was a more open and, like, loving person. Not just be like, hey, girl, we're going to go out and go shopping. Like, oh, my God, where is... Our Lord and Savior. When are we getting Meryl her Oscar? Oh, wait. Is Meryl the queen of the gays or is that Glenn Close? It's Barbara. When are we going to get Barbara her Oscar? I thought it was Judy. Stop it. Judy's also queen of the gays. Thank um, you. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was not happy with that. Like, that's the same reason why I dislike Chris in the English job of Yuri on Ice. And I think it just went offensive it went it crossed the line between okay this is fun and funny to i am kind of offended so there's there's that but i thought every like the first walk he did i was like yeah i'd, I'd tap that can i have a boss route the one that offered <laughs> to kill people for e- who like would threaten the staff because of Iggy, like he was best waka yeah yeah that was a good waka um but that's all I really have to say about Waka. As for Orion, well, he's annoying oh in the game. Like, really annoying in the game. Um, and he's... Now, what 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 function does he serve the in the game? The function that he he's serves in the game is that he's squirrel. basically, like, your little animal sidekick who tells you what's going on. So, like, like, you know how Sunny was the talking squirrel in Brothers Conflict? Exactly. Kinda, That's exactly, yeah. exactly what like he is. So, squirrel. like, he'll be, like... Oh, you lost all your memories. You should look for stuff. Where should we look first? And then it's like, you look under the bed, you look in the diary, you look in your phone. Right. Like, and he basically says, oh, you should go check out the window and see what's going on, like, outside. You know, basically shit like that. It's late. You should go to sleep. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) I gotta go to bed, guys. I gotta go to work in the morning. This house is on fire. You should probably get out. Exactly. Like, that's that's the purpose of Orion in the game. Um, The purpose of Orion in the anime was basically to just be annoying. Um, I it's thought pajama that, pants. I, I thought, I thought the voice sounded Canadian. Did anybody else what? pick up on Canada? A little bit. I no. Pe- um, actually I had the, re- I had the reverse actually. I thought it was more of a Southern dialect. I didn't dialect. hear any of that. I just thought it was a kid. <laughs> like, oh, I, thought. S- but I, I didn't think it, she sounded very little boyish and kind of whiny. And I felt like that it kind boy, of yeah. had very little emotion behind it, but... I did want to punt him into the sun to quote Stephanie instead of (laughs) letting him help me find my memories. Um, But I think that's what I want him to find is alcohol so I can drink to forget it. (laughs) I think that's what this character needed though. Although at the very end with that whole fucking montage, I was like, you fucking kidding me. I could have gotten five more minutes of Ukiyo and instead I got this bullshit. Every Mm. night. I know, right? (laughs) Fuck me. So, but I, the character is annoying. So I thought in order to have an annoying little voice that it fit. But somebody else take over. Uh, I will because I've already said like Waka is Waka is pretty good when he's not um when he is not being uh the gay Waka. Like, <laughs> like that, like I said, again, they could go without, but unlike Yuri on Ice, where they could realize, hey, Chris is a little too overdone and have dialed it back for the home release. Home release is forever, kids. Mm. Um, This can't be changed. <laughs> and it was... Tell that to George Lucas. <laughs> Who Damn shot it. first? <laughs> Haunt. Um, <laughs> I love Haunt. Haunt fucking did. But my, um... My biggest thing is Orion was by far the worst voice in the show for me. I hated it. Orion is annoying as shit. And whoever, and and I'm pretty sure Shannon Emmerich is a good actress. 
she was not a good choice for this because she could not, like, you know who would have been really good for this? Terry Doty would have been really good for this. What? Like, Lucy Christian, people who could do, like, genuine good, like, little boy voices. And with the amount that Orion talked, it got really grating fast. To go through our group chat, I want to read at yeah. one point a conversation between Gigi and me. Uh-oh. <laughs> now shit's on oh fire. Boy. Ah, you've entered the worst part. Yes, because Orion's back. <laughs> <laughs> like I wanted to just just like Orion is the most annoying voice in the show to me not because it not only because it is flat and boring whenever he talks to Snossage Chan um just just he is just so like annoying he like him in his shitty ass pajama pants <laughs> Look, here was also another point of the show. <laughs> Are these Iki fan club bitches gonna murder her? Also, hey, Redacted showed a second emotion. Wait, show, go back to having less Orion. <laughs> um, like, anytime, anytime Orion is on, uh, was on screen and talked, it was arguably something, part of, some of the worst parts of the show. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure Shannon, Shannon Emmerich is a good actress. Um, I'm pretty sure this is not the worst little boy voice I've ever heard, but God, is it really grating. Probably so is my voice after you yeah. listen to me scream for like 10 hours. <laughs> Wait, we're recording for 10 I hours? Yep, strap your boots in. I'm in this cage. You're in this cage. We're all in the cage together. <laughs> Hooray! No, we're not. Fuck! I'm not in that cage right now. Not with that attitude. All right, I'm getting us out of this cage. Fine, fine. Let, let me try, take the key and get us out of this cage a little faster. So, I'll agree. Waka was, uh, I mean, it's Jay Hickman, and, you know, he, he can do no wrong. Uh, even with the gay uh, moment that he had during Shin's route, um, yeah, it was a little jarring because I didn't know that they were going to change his personality in each uh, arc of the show. But then again, he's not really a character that I really cared about too much. Like Then again, I don't know if I really cared about any of the characters, but... I imagine that in the game, if they do change up his personality, it's a little more enjoyable because you probably have more interactions with him and he's more important than just the one or two episodes that he's in per yeah. arc. So I don't really have a bad thing to say about Jay. I, I do kind of appreciate that he could play the different flavors. Like he's he's really angry in Iki's arc. He's a little quieter in Kenta's arc. And he's got like this, it's going to rain. I can in smell. the beginning, yeah. Yeah, the that was the arc that I wanted to bang voice. him. <laughs> the beginning, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, again, I'm going to chalk that up to, if they're adapting something from the show and uh, the way around that was to make him uh, less uh, flamboyant, then, yeah, they probably should have done that. And like you said, Lilac, we've had uh, homosexual characters in even recent anime, like um, Fuka, we yeah. had a lead character a major who was character, yes. uh, homosexual that was not given no. that same uh, inflection. Rigo, Rigo for Hardo's character. blame that more on... Was gay? Yeah. Yeah. In Fuka. Yeah, in Fuka. And he didn't have, like, that inflection? No. I did not watch Fuka, by the way. No. Yeah. Go back and watch it. it, it honestly, it was kind of a surprise for the season, but this season, this show here... In 2014. I got, I got real, really no bad thing... No bad thing to say about Jay, honestly. I think he did what he was told to do well, and I didn't hear any incompetence. We're going to hear a lot of incompetence in some of the other characters we got up. Jay did not have that. He is a list actor. When are we going to get in our season of Kaleido Star? Okay, on to the next character. You do. Orion! Same. <laughs> I don't even know anything about it, so whatever. R.I.P. Kaleido Star. Speaking of uh, his character in Kaleido Star, which is an omnipresent mm-hmm. spirit animal who gives dumps so exposition Shannon on Emmerich. the lead female, <laughs> Orion. Well, um, yeah, uh, I think the only time I've heard Shannon before in a show was uh, she was the boy cat ghost character in Clan Ad After Story. And she's basically got the same uh, performance in this show as well, except she's given tons of dialogue that really really makes me want to take a cheese grater to the ears not because of her voice exactly but just because it's it's like it makes the lead character it makes squish mitten just sound like a complete airhead that she has to be told these things by this omnipresent character throughout the entire series and i don't okay lilac you said earlier that every performance in the sub 
would make you want to kill yourself. Was the sub performance of Orion? It's been this like five grating? years since I've seen the show. First of all, yes. So I barely remember. It is but, just as bad. To be you, fair, but like, say, to be fair, it is just I, as bad. When I, I watched the show five years ago, I swore I'd never watch it again, but now here I am, <laughs> in the cage <laughs> with the rest of us. <laughs> Now, here's the thing is that I'm not going to say that it was a bad performance entirely because I actually enjoyed one part of mm -hmm. uh, Orion's performance, and that was the end yeah, title cards, cute. the end previews at the begin end of episodes. Those were cute. Like, those were like, okay, you know what? This I is like kind of, of like a, a I only saw the first one. adorable uh, mascot character kind of here's what's coming up in the next episode sort of voice. I'm like, I don't think they could have carried that into the whole show because all the, the lines in the script are about, we have to, um, uh, mm. here's what I think about all the characters, uh, you shouldn't trust these male characters, <laughs> don't forget to brush your teeth, by the way, uh, <laughs> eat like, your really food, common things that you should know shit. what to do over it. Yeah, <laughs> don't drink that coffee! Like, someone makes a comment and says to the lead character, they say, you know, you could lose your memories and you could learn how to stop <sighs> breathing, and I had to think, you know what, this, this bitch is so <laughs> Honestly, stupid, she yes. probably would forget oh, how to breathe. <laughs> But that, we'll talk about the lead character later. Orion itself, I understand the function from the game. They wanted to carry that over into the series here. I don't think they should have done that. They could have easily written this character out and just have the character a little smarter, like think for herself a little bit. And we wouldn't have then needed this. But that's the fault of so. the show. I know. That's and the I show, it. not the dub. But it's very. Steph, what do you think? It is. It is. It is the dub is gonna be picked well, on I mean, quite a bit. You're, you're not I don't wrong. hate it it's as much. Picked on but... Quite a bit, but in this instance, it's the show's fault, not the dub. Um, so I appreciate Jay Hickman. I do like Jay Hickman. I appreciate him going. God knows what he did with each iteration of Waka. But coming back, because again, haven't seen the show in five years. I don't even remember if in the Japanese he was flamboyant as during Shin's route. That was jarring as all hell. I didn't find it offensive, but it was very jarring compared to the other personalities that Waka had throughout the whole show in each of the routes. That was the one thing that I think I had a slight issue with with Jay. Um, Shannon, though, because uh, where are my notes that I have stuff about Shannon? I. No, Bring I. Bring out the I, chains, GG. While it can be obnoxious at points, I actually kind of enjoyed Shannon as Orion. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was kind really? of fun. Like this, this spunky little, this spunky little fairy thing, as he refers to himself as, like trying to his damnedest to help this girl out. Though to be fair, Orion as a character was better when he was not around. But <laughs> as a character, <laughs> not a character, not 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 in terms you of Shannon. You were better when you were not I, I actually thought it was a lot of fun. I, despite it being obnoxious at points, I honestly I thought it was fine. Again, this show, this dub mostly for me is tolerable. So I'm not gonna have many many negative things to say. Honestly, speaking of negative things to say, <laughs> um, I'm thirsty fam and it's fucking valentine's day and i need some boys um and we're gonna do the boys in chronological order and it's been too long that i'm thirsting over walk of the boss so let's go in chronological order we're gonna talk about uh the man who wears red he's the king of hearts his name is shin and shin is played by uh houston hayes now we we've talked about Houston Hayes before briefly. We know. Yeah. He, was he plays badass. yes, he plays double badass Shin again. <laughs> oh, his name is also Shin. Oh shit, you're right. He plays Shin times two in Diabolic More Blood. He plays a uh, Kyo Shiranui from Hakuoki, another Otome adaptation, and Shun Ibusaki from Food Wars, aka the only thing I've ever heard him in is double badass because I haven't started watching Hakuoki yet. All right, so Shin is supposed to be the Sundere guys. Would anyone have gotten that no. from this performance? I, uh, based on his backstory, I don't. I, don't I, I thought he was the, supposed to be the bad I don't boy. Think, yeah, that's what I was thinking. He's either the bad boy or 
the childhood friend character. He so that's is also Toma. <laughs> he is. I didn't get Sundere. He, he, I did not get Sundere. He calls her Baka no, all the time. Baka. He I mean, a, true. He does it, call her dummy. He is a Sundere. But he, she is. Um, and uh, Shin, my little my little hot topic reject, who wears two different color boots and two different <laughs> color leggings on each of his legs. Oh my god. Um, so Shin's like talking to a wall. He has absolutely zero emotion in any line that he ever says. My dad um, murdered a man. What? He pushed him down the stairs. I'm so sorry. Um, just just nothing there's nothing about shin there's no angst where there should be angst because yes he is an angsty sundere um he's a hot topic reject he's just ugh. the whole show is a hot topic i know reject. but i'm i'm just sad you and kink. here it is my kink actually um <laughs> but i'm just i'm so sad that like if diabolic ever gets a third season he just he needs to put something behind double badass or he's gonna not even be a single badass like i just i i don't i don't know i don't know if he can pull off anything else because this is the second time i've heard him and granted the first time was only for a couple of lines but i heard more promise in the couple of lines than i did and he was a main character in this dub now i will say this before somebody else can cut me off in the bloopers in the lost diary entries Shin like takes it over for a couple paragraphs and he was actually really funny. So maybe Houston is more better suit is better suited to comedy. I don't know, but I, this was the worst. This was the worst boy for me. I haven't what? even played his route in really? the game yet because I just I liked him like aesthetically, well, second best because we all know who best boy is. But I didn't. I wanted to save his route for last, and now like I don't even want to play it. I'm just like I'm so disappointed with the voice trying to match this character that it just. Uh, I just wanted so much more from Shin. I just wanted him to make out with me against a piano, and the piano sounded better than him playing discordant keys. Okay, I'm done. Wow. What? I agree with you. You have high standards. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. You both oh have my high God. standards. What? Yeah, no, I didn't like Shin either. Um, Houston Hayes can do comedy because he's he's Sakamoto in Haven't You Heard Him Sakamoto. And he's... Oh, fuck. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm dead serious. No, he is. Is he funny in that? If from the clip I saw, yes. Yes. Okay, well, I, then I've maybe that's his, his niche is but like, that he's supposed but no, to do I, comedy. But no, I agree with her completely. Like, Shin was was probably one of the worst of the boy performances like he was completely flat he was very not entertaining like he was like it, like if he was supposed to be your like sundere guy like the the i i don't like you or anything babaka like as a guy like i don't know what the guy equivalency of that is i mean it's like I don't know who that guy was in, like... The guy equivalency is guy equi what it do in Brocon. That was the Sundere. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so stop reminding me that I vomited to that. Um, <laughs> thanks, Matt Mercer. But I, I mean, like, you were supposed to... I know like, what I agree with you, no, but, but thanks for reminding like, us just, Like, this came out, like, four years ago, and Houston Hayes has apparently done other things and has gotten better. But, um, like, he was very flat. He somehow made the the an actress that's in the show that I don't like very much seem even seem even like she seemed vibrant next to him. Um, it, wow. it was just very flat and boring. And like I said, one of the worst things that a show can be, especially when it's a harem or a reverse harem, is that a the character you don't like believably think that you could fall in love with him even though he even if he's not your type so zero chemistry mm -hmm. yeah there's zero. nothing there there is no spark there is nothing that draws me to shin because i will say this as a guy in terms of like appearance and stuff he's also very lackluster so you have to make up with it with personality and he didn't but he's the heart well he didn't well, this show heart it needed to be transferred because it was bad. Hmm. Maybe his heart got uh... transplanted to Iki. Okay, point. Lilac, counterpoint. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Take it away. No, 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 say, no, no. Say... I'm asking. What? Because here, here's my thing. 
I actually liked him as shit. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, the fuck you talking about? No, like, my thing is, is maybe it's because I've had that five year break since watching the show originally and I couldn't quite remember some of the personalities from these characters. And it's for Shin. I didn't get Sundere. I didn't remember or recall that being the character <laughs> trope they're going with with him. So, mm -hmm. how I saw it was more childhood friend, kind of down to earth, but yet he's still very conscientious of his actions. And granted, it's not the best performance, but I, it's certainly not the weakest to me out of the boys, honestly. It's in the Are middle. second weakest. Like, no. Not to me, anyway. To me, but, um, But, like, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> I think it's weird that I say this. I think Shin is one of the guys that I actually could... For me, going into the show again, Shin is one of those guys that I actually feel attracted to in some sort, in some ways. So, I know we were saying earlier that some of the performances, like you got, you gotta feel like that you want to bang him, but I didn't get this. I'm like, I kind of feel slight attraction to him, not enough to like have the sex, <laughs> but <laughs> like. This is a no kink, sh uh, no kink shame anyway. zone. No, Jesus Fuck can you. kink shame you. That's it. But no, like, I can, I can kind of see like a bit of attraction there. If it was me playing this character, like the heroine, and going at it here, and because I'm the kind of person who takes things slow in relationships, I don't go head first. And you would all like that Kent. You're not about the the fast, hot electric. Because exactly. Kent did not get a route in this anime, Shin for you, no. I feel, is vanilla white bread, no. which is why you like him. J just like you <laughs> like. Fair. I also like. What's Kent, his face? But Kent is a good boy. Kent is a very good boy. Kent is super <laughs> vanilla white bread, like with the cuss crud off, creamy peanut I'm butter. I'm not surprised with that, honestly. Yeah, I'm it's Kent so creative sauce. Yeah. Because, to be fair, I've had my fair share of bad boys that I've dated, and I don't like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I and can, also, to be fair, I also haven't had a boyfriend in a long ass time. I can, I can see why you would like Shin. I don't know why right. you would like his voice, but I can see why I you actually, would like Shin. I, like, I don't know what it is. It's, it just, while you guys didn't thought it was, like, a weak performance. I actually, I really enjoyed Houston in it. Uh, though his performance is kind of middle ground. It's not the weakest. Unfortunately, we're going to get to the weakest in a little bit, but um, and oh, I say unfortunately because reasons, but um, <laughs> I just, I want to like bang a bell, put on boxing gloves and be like, are you ready? Are you ready? No, Let's it's not it who you think it is. We're going to have the, the route oh, okay. throw down. Um, it's not who you think yeah. Did you have anything else about your your new boy, Shin, so I can stop <laughs> making f fun of you with that other dude <laughs> whose name I can never remember? No, it's just it's just really weird, because um, I think when I watched the show a few years ago, the character that I felt the most attraction to at that time was Toma. <laughs> what is wrong with you? With... Mm. Toma's no, great. No. Fuck no, no, off. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. I was attracted to Toma until we got to his route, and then I was done. Please, sir, may I have another? Then I was done with him. But going back into it, I think Shin, Shin's, Shin's route, and I think Shin's route was one of the ones I kind of got attachment to all of a sudden, and then I honestly, I, I, I get where you guys are coming from in terms of Houston Hayes here, but I actually thought it sounded pretty natural and rather down to earth like compared to some of the other performances from these main four characters if anything Houston's character for Sh with Shin was probably the more most down to earth one out of the four or five I should get I guess technically you should say yes, but five mm -hmm. you see you see what I mean though it's the most down to earth and it's not the most crazy and bombastic so you can see why I kind of enjoy it a little bit more and how I can get attached to it Yep, but that. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Let let me try to ingest some testosterone into this estrogen podcast. Please do. Okay, so I have to pick a side here. Am I gonna be on 
the Meg and Gigi side, or am I going to be joining Lilac in the cage? And in this case about uh, Houston's performance, scoot over, Lilac. I'm going to yeah! be joining you in the cage for a bit here. <laughs> Sit with me. Okay, no, no. We'll get comfy in this, in this little seat. It's great. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, uh, now, I'm not attracted to any of the characters, Stop obviously. Denying. Um Like, <laughs> my, my type of guy is not even in this show. Let me just throw that out oh, there. Oh, okay. But... In terms of uh, the uh, acting performances, Houston has this no-nonsense personality to him, which can come across as dry if you read the lines like you're reading off of a script. Right. But Houston has this very natural uh, speed and inflection to his voice that comes off as um, as very no-nonsense. Like right. uh, Lilac said, he's grounded, but it's not the kind that's dry and boring. And especially when you find out more about his backstory, yeah. you kind of get about why he's got this unobtainable personality. So there's this, just this little spark that voice good voice actors have yep. that prevent even regular monotone speaking from sounding boring. And Houston has that. He can speak normal speaking. Dry, like I'm gonna order something from the uh, from the Taco Bell drive-through, <laughs> and it will it will sound it will sound distinct enough. Yeah. He's just got that spark to him. So even so even in the scene where in his arc where he's not really given a ton of great content, but he is given the good. Um, uh, what is it? He says, like, you saved me from myself uh, yeah. mentality, where he talks about uh, yeah. how having a girlfriend kind of prevented him from being as bad as his dad. Um, it, it's believable. Yeah. It's it's the kind of uh, kind of a bad boy who wants to be a good boy mentality that um, I bought it. Mm -hmm. I bought Houston's performance I of did it. Too. So, yeah, I had no problems with it. Um, like I say, he's not my best boy or anything, but it, he is definitely one of the better actors in this. He's the one who sounded like he was caring enough in this that I didn't want to, you know, like throw him into the back into the booth and say, no, try harder. Well, speaking of best boys, I hope we're not going to oh, have no. to have a discussion over who actual De best boy in this anime debatable, is. Debatable. 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 But that's only because I'm attracted to a different kind of boy compared to you, Gigi. Best boy <laughs> in this anime, not best route, but best boy is the king of spades. Special <sighs> brand. Iki, my special friend, oh. EQ. Mm, mm. And Iki <laughs> uh, is played. Is Gigi, Why we like, like to keep this part year? of the podcast dry. Would you stop making those fucking jokes? I hate them. You do it to yourself. Let's be honest Fuck here. Fuck you. With the Guys, sausage? we can't. We cannot throw. <laughs> we cannot throw Gigi off of a cliff just oh yet. We gotta God. get to the end of the episode. But, but we're moving on to Iki. She, she already kind of fell off the cliff. We're already past <sighs> shit at this. Point. We're past the cliff. We're into the well. <laughs> We're, yes. we're 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 no, no. We're not. No. 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 no we're not, not at the well at yet. Later. Megan. Technically, okay. In Iki's route, if you get the bad end, you get pushed off a cliff. So this <laughs> is where the, the cliff king. is. Long live King Iki, the king of spades, played by Blake Shepard. Can I say this? This was in our chat last night. Blake Shepard's hold, Blake Shepard hold me in your masculine arms. Quote, no clue. 2018. <laughs> I love him. That is what I wrote. But... <laughs> okay. So if you haven't heard of Blake Shepard, you clearly haven't been listening to our fucking podcast because every time I talk about him or mention his name, I fucking moan a little. Um, Blake Shepard. <laughs> oh, oh, Not as much as Ian Sinclair, but I mean, maybe I'm going to have to rearrange my reverse pretty soon. Oh, oh, um, oh shit. So, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, no. So. What's wrong with a two for one? Oh, a lot of things. <laughs> Nothing, actually. Um, so Blake, <laughs> Blake plays my husbando, Lito, from Diabolic and Diabolic Lovers More Blood. He plays Soma in Food Wars. And uh, back to Hakuoki, because a lot of people are in fucking Hakuoki. He plays Soji Okita. I think he's Soji like Okuda, one of them. The guy who led the Shinsengumi? I don't know. I don't. Play that was Samurai a fucking game. plot point in Token Rabu Hanamaru. You think I watched fucking Hakuoki? You already threw me under the bus with this one, so I'll go ahead and jump in. On jump this. into the well, the well of all your desires. Sorry, Blake Shepard's down yeah, at the bottom. Okay. So yes, as Meg had said, quote unquote, my initial reaction upon hearing Blake's performance was, "Take me in your masculine arms, Blake." <laughs> because it was, I knew that there wasn't going to be another character like this in the show, and he. He clearly fits that um, 
that that heart throb um now my Lifei and your Lifei are connected as one mentality. Oh. Um, he makes the vagina Blake's quiver. Just, Blake's just got just got it going on. Um, yeah, he's got he, he's definitely the most alluring. Like if we want to talk about this game and the characters being actually sexy, like Iki actually fits that mold of like like this could actually be someone that you may consider sexy. Oh yeah. And Blake plays it up. Like the the man has got it going on. Like I, I hear. Uh, porn riffs playing in the background when he walks in and takes off those glasses like <laughs> all the panties job you gotta put you gotta put the cornflakes in first coincidentally put, cornflakes put the cream it off on with my top whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> coincidentally cornflake is Noah's porn name <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you so I yeah so, I, okay so, so, I don't even this anymore. Point, what I, is I, wrong with me, Noah? <laughs> well, obviously you're not going to church enough, so we need, we need oh to fix God. that. Well, I am going to one on Friday, and according to my mom, the second I dip my hand in the holy water, she expects me to burst into flames. <laughs> I get on my knees a lot, but it's not really to pray, I guess. Whoa. Take me oh my to God. church. <laughs> Look, I'm going to get a so damn are... date on Valentine's Day, no matter who I got to whore myself out to on this podcast. Ah, okay. yes, Father right. Shepherd, I've come to the <laughs> temple. <laughs> I think I ran out of things to say. Look, look, Blake is good. Blake is awesome. He, he, he I think he is the best male performance Same. of all the, the, all the X Y chromosomes um, in this whole show. Debatable. And I think, I, no, well, no. I, I think he sounded like he was having the most fun. Yes. Uh, just, debatable. Uh, of all of them. Uh, fine. We'll, we'll debate. We'll d de those baits when we get to them. But yeah, uh, fall and foremost. If I had to pick one to say like this is the guy who looked like he was doing the best of all the actors. Uh, I definitely give it to Blake. I am on Team Noah. Team Noah for this Yay. one. Iki, by far, best boy, best voice. It's so fucking it's sexy. Beautiful. And I would let him do whatever he wanted. And I'd like to dub Iki Lito Light. <laughs> because I he mean, didn't. You're not wrong. He didn't quite get to that level where I was like, holy well, shit, bitch. take me in a church of bitch little chan. He, bitch. Didn't, he didn't get little to the little bitch level. Yeah. You know how much I like to get to the little bitch level. He didn't quite get there, but I think for this anime, that was a, probably about as high as he could go. Like when he said the line about like, I'll do anything you want, but you know I like it if it's kinky. That was actually in the game. So I was like, <laughs> oh, his wow, exact okay. line was, yeah. I, I, he wanted a request and he said, I'd appreciate if you made your request a little kinky. Yeah, and I was like, there he is, there he is. And then there's like the part where he got drunk and oh, he drunk. Okay, that part was great. That he was drunk good. dialed Snossage. That was good. That was good. <laughs> I was like, oh God, is this going to go where the game goes? Is it going to go where the game goes? Because I had forgotten what happens. Um, and no, in the game, no. they sleep together like in the same bed. They don't fuck, but they like Boo. sleep in this. I know, right? Aww. They That's sleep kind of together. Right? Adorable. What a fucking bitch. They sleep together in the same bed. He gets all like cuddly and everything and it's super fucking cute, but he just fucking like walks away. So he like totally blue balls her and I was like, oh. <laughs> Blue gels. Look, I hate to burst your bubbles, ladies, but there are very few men out there who are this chaste as the guys in this I game. No shit. Fuck. Especially for high schoolers. I've been watching no, they're no, they're no, in college. Everybody. Only college Shin students. is in high school. They are college students. They're not high schoolers. Some of them are. Shin is in high school. That's it. Shin is in high school. They're everybody else isn't, though. Everybody else is in college. Um, But Iki, by far, best performance. Nice. Best boy. He also sort of looks like Hisoka on a good day. So you can see <laughs> oh, my that, that explains a lot. That explains it all. He can totally push me off a cliff he and I would be okay. <laughs> Best dip Best death he's like ever. His, if his Soka, he's like if Hisoka fucked a Smurf. Oh, I'm, I'm strangely oh into God. that. I, I always thought he was more of like, uh, you guys have seen Batman Beyond, yeah. right? Oh, he reminded me of like one of the Jokers, like one of the lost Jokers. Oh my God. So he's like, if a Joker, Hisoka and his Smurf had a three-way and made a baby. Stop <laughs> it. I'd be strangely into that. Oh God, you would. Oh Does anybody else want to join Again, me no and Team King Noah Shane. on our great, oh, great Iki no. side? Yeah. Fuck you guys, Megan. What yeah. do you think then? Uh, I do. I do have to. I do have to agree. By the way, that the drunk part was funny. It was good. And I did write down this one line in this one exchange, which probably made me laugh harder than anything in the show. Okay. Which was, um, Snossage is on the phone with him, 
while he's drunk and he's like outside of her apartment, the only thing he needed was the boom box above his head. <laughs> I don't know what song it is that plays. In your yeah, eyes. In yeah. your... That would be really fitting too for Iki. Oh my, oh my god! Oh my god! You're so right. funny. In your Somebody eyes. make that gift. Noah, Roots of Justice, if you hear me, make that shit post happen, boy. But no, the line is like Maggie's. No, I mean Snossage is on the phone, and she's like, "Did you walk here?" And just Blake Shepard, hell yeah. That was so hot, yeah, though. Yeah, that was great. But that it was, was just so, so hot, funny. Though. Hell yeah. But. Other, but Blake Shepard isn't the best voice on the show. There are times because I think mm. that Iki was kind of a boring route. Uh, his literal thing was my brand. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. His, his route was kind of boring, but he did a really good job. And I do think that if I was attracted to Iki, I would be on your side. I would say he's the second best boy of all the boy voices. I forgot um, the fifth one. To be fair, fair. but he, he, he mm. is still best for me. Megan, you alive? Fifth route boy uh, is, is my fifth route boy is my favorite boy, but not my favorite performance of oh. all people. Um, okay, you're gonna be quite Honestly. shocked. Anyway, Lilac, go here, go over <laughs> while I imagine Hisoka begging a Smurf. God damn it! La 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 la. Man, that that new Smurfs movie is uh, going in a really dark direction. Wow. <laughs> La, uh, la, 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 uh. <laughs> I fucking quit. I fucking quit. I'm so done. Okay. All oh, right. Megan's go to sub hell. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. So my thing. Oh, so to Iki's not my best boy. First of all, and Blake's not my favorite performance. Second of all. Um, however, remember, Gigi, in the words of you last Valentine's Day, don't worry, everyone's going to disappoint you. It's true. <laughs> no, but, um, I mean, he, he, I have to read my exact notes on this because this will tell you a lot. Why is Blake really good at play at voicing the player type roles? It's kind of terrifying, but that's OK. <laughs> Blake, are you a player? <laughs> I, I know you not. like that fucking like tweet nice that I did about the Diabolic More Blood episode. Are you a player, Blake? Do you want to play with me? Like half the girl, <laughs> half the girls in Houston are in the Blake Shepard fangirl club. You know it. No, I'm but, president. <laughs> but also, like, <laughs> my thing is Blake not only did really well with the flirtatious side, because, like Gigi, I was having flashbacks to Lito for half the fucking time, but. You can also tell, especially during Iki's route, that excuse me, you can tell that he finally wants to find someone that genuinely loves him, yes. and he's okay with being vulnerable towards them. Ugh. So I got those. I did get all those aspects of Blake with his performance with Iki. But my thing is, I've also seen Blake play the player before. You know what I mean? It's and you don't want to fuck him. No, I don't want to fuck him. I want to. I, I may. I may or may not be into Shin, but that's one of those things where it's like I need some time here. So I, I don't. I don't. Blow him. I don't fuck on the first <laughs> date. I don't fuck on the first date. Okay. Now we're there's dating fuck, involved. Man. What's this dating that you speak of? Look, Gigi, oh, some God. girls. Some girls on the first date. Don't want to be stuffed like a Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. Please cut that out. <laughs> All right. so. Anyway, no, but anyway, <laughs> I mean, I like I like Blake as I do like Blake as Iggy. It's not my favorite performance. It's, he, obviously, he's not my best boy, but at the same time, it's weird going back in time because this predates Lito and Diabolic Lovers. So obviously, he's had some experience being the fucking player and possibly sexual deviant uh, character. Mm. <laughs> Lito. He's um, got his eye but on But only for three months. Yes. Essentially. He's very but, goal oriented. <laughs> but it's it's not too bad. I, I like it. It's I, I, I like the performance and the role. It's not my favorite. 
really what it comes down to. But I get where the direction that he was going with it, and I really enjoyed that. Why is it all characters like that? All the guy characters like this have a fangirl club. Like this reminds me exactly of Yuki from Fruits Basket. Why do they have a fangirl okay, club? Okay, because all the time? Yuki from Fruits Basket was worth it. Uh, have you read the manga? Yes, actually, I've read don't the entire spoil thing. It. You want to bite me? Please don't. don't please don't. No, spoil no, no, no. I just don't spoil you, the manga. I want to read you, it. You know how it turns out for him. No, yeah, no, I know no, how no. it turns out. Okay. All right, so let's move on from Iki, who could possibly be into some kinky shit. Who to Kent, who, number one, no one knows what his name is. But number two, he has 27 belts that he can tie me up with. So I'm all about it. Maybe. Buckle See, boy. Here's, Buckle boy. Here, here's potentially my best boy. Potentially Kent, here's my best boy. Kent. Kento. Kenta. The Very. anime, I guess, names him as Kento. But Lord knows nobody can get his name right. In the game, his name is just Kent. So um, he is based on the clover. His color is green, and uh, he's mm. he's a nerd. So Kent is I played like by my nerds. I like my nerds. <laughs> Kent's played by Tyler Galindo, who has also played uh, Ryota Sakamoto in Batum, which I didn't know until I read his BTVA page. Which I was I like, know nothing shit. about Batum. Oh my god, Batum is so fucking trashy. It is amazing. Oh, wonderful. Um, Show, he, if it's a show that is continuously on sale during the Right Stuff holiday sales, I tend to think that it's pretty trashy. It's worth a $6 to buy it. Oh, um, wow. He, okay. He well, plays, I mean, From the New World was on their sale a lot, and that's actually considered one of the best shows they've ever dubbed. Fair. Uh, he plays Shinichi Kano from Outbreak Company, who I have seen one episode of Outbreak Company, and it's the guy who I'm thinking it is. He's also a huge nerd. And he plays Minabe from Chivalry of a Failed Knight, which I'm not touching with the 10 put pole. So, so fun thing about Kent is that just by the way he looks, I expected a David Wald type voice to come out of his mouth. <laughs> How, however, in every single iteration of Amnesia, it is a higher pitched tenor male voice oh, yeah, who you're sounds right. like a fucking nerd. And so I nerd! was like, nerd. And Kent is a nerd. Oh my God. Like his route is so nerdy. Like it is legitimately like he doesn't want to hold your hand because he doesn't understand it. And the whole reason that you start going out in the first place is because he thinks that love is just a chemical reaction in the body. And you're supposed to prove him wrong and show that love is like a real thing. And it's kind of like, you can't really explain why or whatever it happens. His route in the game is actually kind of good if you like no drama in your Otome. Unfortunately, you don't get to see that in the anime because they gave him one fucking episode. Fucking yeah. Ken got gypped. I am Ken mad. Got and gypped. yet we gave and yet we gave Toma. Who we'll talk about in a minute. Fucking episode. Who we'll talk so, about in a minute, and there's a reason why. So as for this Kent, is part of a long, long, long tradition of the intellectuals getting gypped when it comes to attention. It's so department. disappointing because I do like my nerds, so I mean he the voice Tyler like the nerdy monotone voice I think it fits the character really well um I just wish there were more emotion behind it even though I know there's really not supposed to be but I wanted there to be some kind of chemistry between him and Snossage <laughs> fuck <laughs> and I just I just I didn't feel the chemistry between them but I to be fair, his route sucks. And he basically has more chemistry with Orion than he does with the girl he's trying to bang. Excuse so, you. If I were playing the game, that's probably the first route I would go for because it's me. <laughs> I got fucking well, bad ends on every single here. route because this game is impossibly hard. And you know who I got the good end on? The very first good end is fucking Kent. How do you think that made me feel about myself? Me, Gigi, the queen of the fucking cage. I couldn't even get in the cage. I had to cheat to get in the fucking cage. <laughs> and I got the good end on Kent. I wanted May to die. Maybe it's a sign that you yeah, should stop dating assholes. You it's a cause you're too smart. The universe. This isn't a dub talk about my life. Somebody else. Stephanie, talk about how much you love vanilla Kent with 27 belts. Look up that ice cream stuff. <laughs> I, 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 uh. <laughs> like I still can't believe you counted all twenty-seven of them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, like 
I like Kent as a character. He's nerdy and he's adorable because he's like he's not he doesn't quite understand the whole dating and relationship thing and when during his episode where the uh the heroine is waiting for him to go to the festival and um sausage chan is waiting <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> never <laughs> <laughs> she's waiting for him to go to the festival because they promised to go and he completely forgot because it was something he wasn't interested in. So, I gotta admit, the, that was probably one of the best reactions because he, she calls him. No, he, t she texts him first, saying like, "Hey, I'm, I'm here at the station waiting for you." For he got there pretty fucking fast. He did. Yeah, he no, did. he called immediately, and he, and, and one of the best reactions was that he's like, "Well, she's like, oh, I, I, no, it's okay if we can go some other time. I can go home." He's like, "No, nope, no, nope, I'm on my way out right now." Like that was the funniest shit because that was one of the few times where he, got, he got to be like, "Oh shit," change the tone of voice. My thing is, I love Kent as a character. He's so sweet. He's such a nerd. I love my nerd. <laughs> but um. The thing is... Would you stop calling him a... He's not a nerd. He's a scholar. Yes, he is you a are scholar. correct. He is a scholar, and I like my intellectuals. But um, that's probably the better way to put it. I like my nerds, but I also love my intellectuals. Um, but for Tyler, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've... This is one of the first times I've ever really heard him in anything. I hate to say it, but this is probably my weakest performance. That's not where I thought you were going to go. You thought I was going to say that Blake was my weakest performance, weren't you? No, I thought you, you were going to say that Kent was the best. No. Because you like vanilla. He's probably the best. Well, he's the best boy, but Kent's I can see what you're saying about Tyler not being the best performance. Right. It was very, it was rather monotone and one note throughout most of it. The most, again, the most fun I had with the performance was when he freaked the fuck out. He's like, nope, nope, I'm on my way over now. <laughs> but I also kind of get where they were going with it. You know what I mean? Because, again, Kent is supposed to be this scholar, this nerd. He's very intellectual. He probably doesn't have a lot of social skills. Let's be fair. Let's be honest here. He doesn't have many social no. skills. No. And he flat out he does. Just like me. I researched that petting girls on the head exactly. releases tension and makes exactly. them happy. So I understand the, route, the direction that they took with Tyler's performance in it. But most of it just didn't come across in the way I was thinking and hoping. That's the one downside, really. But I, I I enjoy it for what it is. It's just compared to some of these other performances and what was done with some of these performances, I mm -hmm. unfortunately have to say it's probably one of the weakest of the boys in this cast. Though Kent is always... Kent will, Kent will probably always be my favorite, honestly. Uh, you you, you want to undo those twenty seven buckles? That's one gonna at take a, time, a long time. That'll, that'll take oh, like that'll take the whole fucking time. That's I mean, that's, I've that's had all, all and the, then you'll both be no, too no, tired no, no. Yep, Since that's basically that it. is the foreplay. No, no, no. We've gotten dirty at this point. I don't fucking care. It'll take the entire <laughs> foreplay session for that to happen. <laughs> That's like that Fly of the Conquered song, you know? It's like, then we go in the bedroom and we start undoing business the 27 time. things. No, That's is. full play. I it's love full business. play. It's business. It's business. Then we start doing a math problem time. to solve the mysteries of the universe. That isn't part of the full play, but it's still very important. He, in the game, he gives her a gift because he was told that handmade gifts are the best things to give to your to your dates and the girls that you like oh, he fucking so gives her cute. a homemade math workbook and then here is the worst part in order for you to get oh the best God. ending you have to solve every single fucking math problem are you serious that is so wow and these math problems awful. are hard it makes me do math Yes, I, I was would, sitting there counting on the my fingers those trying to solve these fucking math problems and I did oh get 8 God. out of 10 so what up Kent Oh my god! Uh, like, are we talking adorable. like what's nine times five, or are we talking no, like, it's like solve is, the quadrant? No, it's, it's like, like what's the wing speed velocity of an unladen swallow? <laughs> That's basically <laughs> it. Up. It's like if person A is walking at fifty kilometers an hour and person B is walking at forty kilometers, kilometers an hour, this fucking oh, when are they going to catch whoa, up whoa, to whoa, each whoa. other? Whoa. First of all, one, okay. one, one. Game translators, kilometers. This is motherfucking America. We use I, miles. I just made that up. <laughs> I just made that up. No, no, no. It's it's. 
You made kilometers as, as, up. They don't actually the exist. I made up the whole metric as system. As dumb as that is, in order to get the good end with Kent, it matches the character, and it's so cute to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm actually pretty decent at math. It's adorable to me. <laughs> I'm a nerd, so, okay, so ladies and let gentlemen? Let this be a note to all you you future lilac uh, quarters out there. Make her up a book of math. I'd rather you not do that. Uh, personally, uh, personally, I'd rather you not do that, because I would probably be like, the fuck? But it is kind of adorable. <laughs> it is adorable. I mean, if math if is your king. If 20 drivers are supposed to show up and 40 drivers <laughs> show up, how many drivers will I like <laughs> kill? Shut the fuck up, Noah. No, no, the answer Don't is you one. Work into no, 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 no. The answer to that question is one, and his name is Noah fucking Clue. Noah fucking Clue, what you think about Kento? <laughs> uh, I. I uh, I didn't mind the voice very much. I'm just gonna try to focus solely on Tyler's performance because um, it wasn't my favorite. Um, I, I, what they seemed to do was that they gave him a very softer, more reserved voice where um, it sounded like he was talking to himself a lot of the times. It's, it's almost internal monologue speaking um, with a bit of a almost a West Coast dialect. Like it sounded almost like he had this like surfer bra uh, eh, inflection to the way I he was bra. speaking. I want to get into your bra. <laughs> I didn't catch that actually. <laughs> I didn't, didn't sound like that. To it, me. Just, uh, just comparing to the other three main boys, um, each one seemed to have slightly different dialect to it, and that's the one I picked up on okay. Kento. Um, <laughs> I, I love the fact that um, he actually gave me my favorite delivery of uh, of the lead character of um, of Short Bus because what she does Short is bus? in one moment she, she's actually uh, like I think what she does is she's talking to herself and asking what is he talking about, but she kind of like turns to the camera. Life and so it sounds like she's asking the audience. <laughs> I, I feel like I was an episode of like fucking Blue Schools, and it's like, "Hey kids, what what the heck is Kento talking about?" <laughs> when he's talking That's about their their actually. past. Snossage clues. Trying to fill in her memories. <gasps> Snossage clues. All of the things <laughs> that you need to pick up instead of it being a blue paw print is like her titty was dipped in paint and pressed on things. <laughs> No, no. No, it's the rose in her hat, yo. Hair. Or, no, in Mary, her hair. Thank you. Also in her Did hair, apparently. Her? How does she do that in <laughs> 10 minutes? I Everybody's know. like, it's I'm coming over anime, in 10 minutes. Why. Bitch has her hat on. She has a fucking rose in her hair. She has got. She's. She looks more put together. Meanwhile, where somebody's like, hey, Megan, I need you to be up in 10 minutes. I look like the hobo that just rolled out of a Boston cemetery. I have, like, eyeliner on one eye in 10 minutes. What the fuck? <laughs> I've seen you get ready wow. for a con. I don't even think you usually have eyeliner on. <laughs> and a, okay. I so yeah, so Tyler's performance. It was like he wasn't really given okay, a whole lot fair, to do. You also wake up like two hours earlier than life. I can That's get fair. Ready. <laughs> like I like I go bare bones makeup here. You just fall out. No, that did like, there's like three bit, levels but... of women that like when we stay together in a hotel, like Gigi's like taking two hours to get ready. Oh, yeah. Lilac gets up, takes time. Me, I'm like, this is fucking clean. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're like Toph from that one episode head. of Avatar where it's like, like I'm ready. Like we're <laughs> basically, yeah, I'm basically seeing Toph. <laughs> hey, Megan, you got a little dirt on your everything, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's that's, speaking that's of, very accurate Speaking of, of dirty, Megan, do you want to get dirty with Kent or what's up with that? Oh, uh, no, <laughs> Kent's voice was sucked. <laughs> oh. Aww. Please, I please didn't be Ken nice. Was... No. Well, no. At least word it better than that. Fine. Uh, I be, think... be a scholar about it. Be a scholar it. about it. Yes. Be critical. His be voice critic. fucking sucks. <laughs> Stop it. There we go. Put that in a citation. Stop We're never gonna be on the back of a Thomas Let's take engine and an argument Make it, with I... me. <laughs> I will throw you through an electric fan, resurrect you with an alchemist spell, just to bring you back to life so I can throw you through that fan again. <laughs> Never. Oh, so, God. my first impression on seeing uh, Kent was literally to screen cap the image and put on my Twitter, <laughs> who fucking trust you? Way to almost <laughs> to spoil which, our secret Valentine's which, episode, bitch. To be fair. Okay, no, to be was... I got reactions from Sarah. Don't play it, just don't watch, just play the visual novel. Amon, a fetish shop, I'd guess. Who's fetish? I cannot say. Who in Japan, and to reply, I said, who Who in Japan walked into a Hot Topic and was like, yes, girls want to fuck this? I do. Uh, my friend Kenny. If you can get the belts off. My friend's Kenny. Uh, our friend Cerulean, a.k.a. Hannah. 
and Noah, not Noah, I mean, um, Andrew, all put Tetsuya Nomura, who, and special shout outs to Andrew's, Andrew's episode, Andrew's, Andrew and Hannah's response. Andrew's Tetsuya Nomura, who is jacking off right now as we speak. <laughs> and Hannah. I didn't get that. Who, who is He's that? the guy no who idea. designed the Kingdom Hearts characters. Oh. Oh, okay. That does to make which, sense. To which Hannah Cerulean responded, Tetsuya Nomiya, also, why are you making yourself suffer through amnesia? Is this Gigi's fault? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, everything is Gigi's fault. fault. It is my Unless fault. Unless it's the Andrew's Hindenburg, fault. 9-11, the Titanic, Whoa, 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 whoa. That shit Look, first of all, dark. one, that, and first of all, one, we all know that a talking cat named Campanella caused the Titanic. Um, <laughs> second of all, uh, no, I did not really like, uh, Tyler. I thought he was very flat and very, um... And I, I get being socially awkward as a character, but you know who really does that well um, as a character with social awkwardness and very lacking in emotions? Brandon Palencia as Rey and Ayanami in the Evangelion Rebuild films. Um, there are ways to do, or like, um, is it Michelle Ruff who plays Yuki Nagato? Yes. Yep. Yeah, Michelle Ruff as Yuki Nagato is how you can do that. I also think that Kent, Kent also got fucked out of airtime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I feel like I think if he had more chance to be with Snossage other than like literally like his entire interaction time with Snossage, they don't fucking say anything to each other. You know why though, right? Like okay, we'll talk about Snossage when we get to her, but she is she's an idiot and Kento is a genius. So well, no, it's like the reason why he didn't get any screen time in the anime is because there's zero drama in his route and this anime yeah. is full of crazy drama as yeah, we're okay. about so to honestly, see as soon like, as Megan is done. Like, yeah, That's, I honestly okay. feel like that if the show would have let him have more screen time or maybe built in drama to expand it a little bit. Mm-hmm. I feel like it would have been better, but I mean, it's it's I would say he is the the weakest of the boys um so but it's not it's not offensive it's just kind of bland and blah you don't want to um you don't want to solve his drake equation i do not want to i do not want to solve his quadratic equation all right i'll do it though (laughs) Woohoo! <laughs> Have fun taking off the twenty-seven belts. I will, damn which he it. will then tie you to the bed with. I I don't Ooh. care. <laughs> don't care. I'm in. I'm, I'm well, in. speaking of speaking of capturing people and speaking of a lot of oh, drama. Oh my no. God! Is it time? It's the time. Oh God! Here we go. This Bail out. Is the Bail time out. you've time. all been waiting for, friends and fans? If you've you been, know this, why I'm called up Queen this, of like, the Cage. Years. This is why, right here, get your dub talk trivia buttons out. We're going to talk about Toma. He is the diamond boy. And uh, he mm. is voiced by Mr. Christopher Ayers. Which is so fucking surprising to me. Uh, yeah. So oh, Chris- my God. Yeah. Christopher Ayers directs a lot of, you know, a lot of shows for Sentai, um, including mm-hmm. our favorite Diabolic More Blood. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Um, I feel like I should have watched that show before we went into yeah, this recording. Maybe. You don't need to watch Diabolic Lovers, Noah. You really, you aren't missing anything. Are you? F- but you guys are no longer friends. It. We're no Actually, longer yeah, friends. Actually, yeah, you should kind of watch it if you hate yourself. There you go. All right. So <laughs> maybe Christopher Ayers has also voiced, and I'm going to fuck this up because I don't watch Dragon Ball, Frieza. Frieza. He's Frieza. And Dragon Ball like and Dragon appliance. Ball Super. Um, Prince Soma Osman Kadar, which no clue that was him from the Black Butler franchise. Oh yeah, and uh, he also plays Duke Everlu in Fairy Tale. I was having problems finding roles that I knew him in. Um, so Toma is by far the best route. We made a little <laughs> reference to this earlier, but goddamn, if David Wald would have played Toma. <laughs> <laughs> would that have been fucking funny? Because then that would be three characters that he has played who are obsessed with fucking roofies. <laughs> if you have not seen this oh, anime. Oh, yeah, right. The guy from Diabolic Lovers, the dad from Go Sick. Yeah. Four. Oh. Because Captain Hardpants gets roofied. That's true. Oh, right. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Here's the funniest part. 
when we were talking to Noah a little bit earlier, he didn't fucking believe us that this cage shit was real until Oh, yeah. Died. Oh, God, read it. You got to read it. the tweets. Oh, God. I got, I got okay, it. Okay, let me find it. Let me find it. Megan, no, right, I, I you got look it. for it. You look for it. Megan's and got I it. Just, it's my tweets. I, yeah, I just, well, I'm the one who's got her phone up fast. Yeah, Megan, so. Megan's got the dick. Here we go. I Noah got... posts a picture of Thomas' face. I've got a good feeling about this. What a cutie. Is is he spiking her drinks? XD. Oh, my God. Oh my god! <laughs> Rufies! Oh my god! Ah, fun Police Part 2. Fun Police Junior. Yes! Welcome to the cage. Oh my god, you weren't joking. Oh, not the slightest. <laughs> this just, shit is just real. Just whoever's editing this, put up the picture. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, I will send I will send pictures for yeah. this. It literally is the screen cap of, of Toma sitting in front of her in this, like, little doggy yeah. cage. That is not a dog cage. That is a tiger cage. Oh, not the slightest. Cage. You will pay for this, Gigi. Uh, emojis, did you really think I was kidding? Or oh, do your worst. What are you gonna do? Make me watch KJ? <laughs> Fiffy. Worse. I'm gonna make you watch Kiss That Sis. Can't, that doesn't have a dub. But meanwhile, to go back to my tweets, because you missed them. Oh, God. Back up at the beginning, before, because I got to the cage before Toma, before Noah. Yep. Um. I just lived okay, there. So poor Kent got, got Kent's the got the cage. shaft. My radar, da my danger radar is going ding over Toma. Did, did. <laughs> he not go get a change of clothes because he was, like, sleeping on the floor in, like, his normal outfit? Right. Toma, that's gotta be uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, then they also go uh, shopping for overnight stuff for oh, her, yeah. and they, like, go to a panty store. Toma is every straight man and me at a Victoria's Secret. <laughs> I remember that! Uh, that Ken was the only sexy thing in the whole show. Was one Ken shot has no drama. He's super rack. cute if you like nerds. If not, like me, pretty boring. Yeah, I got the good ending without cheating. Toma, fuck Toma. Well, I'm assuming that's a good ending, or should we say a happy ending? Get out. I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> this series is a pain. It's a good sign when you want to actively get your lead thrown off a cliff. It's not Snossage who needs to be thrown off a cliff, but Toma. Snossage Chan did nothing wrong. I'm pretty, oh. no, I'm pretty sure that she deserves to be thrown off the tallest cliff. That's the point. She doesn't do anything. Okay, she can stand to fight back. Is that a fucking cage? Okay, <laughs> at least Brocon, at least the go, the Brocon guy semi respected what's her nuts. At least Emma did stuff on her own. <laughs> this girl just takes marching orders from the next dude in a checkered outfit. Let that be a lesson. If nobody, if you don't care about yourself, nobody will. How is this Toma, this Toma shit getting worse? And at this point, by the way, I would like to point out that she is in like. A little girlish looking like nightgown yep. yep. in the cage, surrounded by like stuffed animals, because he did not know what to buy her. She looks like a pedophile's wet dream. <laughs> oh, now she asks how she got in the whole accident. Uh, then Noah's going back. Like, why why the fuck does this exist? Who in Japan thinks this is hot? I'm kink shaming. Kink shaming. <laughs> no, it's Toma must die. Here's my thing. You can Here's have Toma's freaky cage. Here's my thing. Okay. Maybe this is all messed up. That's the understatement of the no, no, no. Here's my thing. Because remember, because I, I said this earlier, five years ago when I originally started the show, I liked Toma as a character. Toma was my best mm -hmm. boy until we mm -hmm. got to the fucking cage. What does that say? When we got to the cage, then Toma became my best boy. When we got to the cage, Toma was like, <laughs> I was like, nope. The I, fuck I am sorry. What the that fuck? That is when the show just went fucking south. Like, for me. literally, the first time I watched this, because I went in blindly, I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, are he, she he she is in a cage like a legitimate fucking cage <laughs> yep. and then i was playing the game and like i said i tried to get the bad end because i wanted to be in the fucking cage so i could not get the bad end my question is where did he fucking find the cage where did he how do you just like how he had you, it i mean he had a lot of time to go to fucking pet smart when he roofied her every <laughs> goddamn day that at a pet smart chichi but like literally this guy looks like he's no older than 19 like do you, I mean, like, do you get Amazon to deliver that to your door? <laughs> no, no, Amazon no, like, Prime, no, motherfuckers, like, in two days or less. It's like... Making good use like, of that $100 it, like, a month really, or 100 a it's year. such a jarring change in character, because here's the thing. He's so, like, unassuming, and he's Probably actually... Probably and nice. Yes, in the beginning, mm. and then you get to this, and it's like, oh my god. But, but, to the credit of Christopher Ayers, this was the most surprising... And it's actually yeah, no, it was really good. And it's actually one of my favorite performances from the show. 
I'm not gonna we lie. Have, I am also favorite. with Lilac. I hated the shit out of it, but Chris Ayers was super it convincing. It was so good. I believe that he was this like 19 to 20 year old guy who walked down to his local Japanese Walmart tan, <laughs> bought a cage, dragged it back, and roofied and threw a girl in there. Yeah. And what's worse is Sausage fucking forgives him! Yes. That's the, that was the worst. That's the worst. That was the absolute sausage worst. Sausage is like, oh, it's okay because he, I love him and he loves me and he's just doing the right thing to protect me. No! No! Yeah. no that is not no. okay! Shit. No. no! No! Look, it no. is only okay if you are under consensual purposes and you have the key. Do not give the key to anybody <laughs> else. You girls whoever is inside the cage has the key no. girl boy whoever Here's- non-binary like look bdsm is not something that we're king shaming like if you think yeah. that that's what we're king shaming here no we're not what i'm not king shaming anything the, the is, thing we're king shaming is the part part where there's like no consent to it yes you have yes. to consent that's yes. part up we're, we're like, shaming Non-consensual imprisonment is kind of a felony, yes, guys. It is. My cage is a Toma cage of consent. Have, Toma should have been fucking arrested for that shit. Because yeah. technically, yeah. technically, he could be arrested for kidnapping, drug he, use. He, he should be getting the sausage like, up the arse himself. And like held, holding, holding someone against their fucking will. Like he could have, he would have, should have gone to fucking jail for all those charges. But here we are. Yeah, like sausage. What the and fuck? And I mean, He's, like when the cops came, because they obviously some police should have come. If he fucking takes her to the hospital because she fucking skins her knee and her elbow, what did the what? what I mean, like the whole thing is so fucking trash. Which is why yes. that's when I fell in love with Amnesia <laughs> right there. Because of course you would. Of course I you would. Of the course trash I would. Queen. I am the trash queen, <laughs> but like I am the queen of this cage, of Toma's cage specifically, <laughs> and I hate to say this, but I did not like this <gasps> performance. Oh my god, wow. what? I was really disappointed in it no. because I just I'm wanted sorry. him to be more menacing when he locked her in the cage. I wanted him mm. to lose his fucking shit and be like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, but I have to put you in there. You have to understand me. You have to believe me. I wanted him to be more creepy and more menacing because once you lose your shit, that's how you're going to be. And then I did like it, however, when she finds the diary at, cl- tr- towards the end of his route and she was like, you know, I loved you because you're my childhood friend. And he like was basically about to like grab her and caveman style her over his shoulder, take her back and put her in the cage. And then he like paused and he was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Like shit. I just fucked up. I fucked up. Shit got real. Do you still love me? And that's when I really liked Toma. Like, I think Toma, Chris Ayers voicing Toma did a good job in like on soft Toma. Yeah. Not Crazy Toma. He, he, and because ooh. I like Crazy Toma, and if you get the bad, bad end in the game, Toma gonna give you roofies every day, put a dog collar on you, and legitimately chain you to the bars in that cage. And I will insert that CG right here, even though I'm not editing this episode. <laughs> oh, the Lord. CG that made the world go round that I had to cheat to get because <laughs> I kept fucking dying in the fucking well. Um, but... I was like waiting for that crazy Toma moment and it never <laughs> came. Like here, here, so that So here's the thing, I actually find that that him being like so soft and like not over the top hammy actually makes it creepier. Yeah. Mm. Like my my thing is with it is one, I never expected Chris Ayers to put the voice of fucking Bishi character. One. <laughs> <laughs> but well. but two, it's the thing you gotta remember is if you put yourself in Toma's mindset, he thinks he knows what's best for the heroine. This is what he thinks is what's best. I think that he th- it came off as a genuine thing. Like, genuinely, I feel that Chris Ayers is like, I have to protect her. I have to save her from all these girls. This is the only thing I could think of. She's not listening to me. What am I supposed to do? I have to do this and this and this and this. She has to stay here. I could feel it. It was rather genuine to me that whole time. It didn't have to be crazy creepy. I want it crazy. I know you want it crazy creepy, (laughs) but I enjoyed genuine. Like, genuine feelings. Mm -hmm. Like... And I mean, the like, gym. in the thing we're going to talk about in the next segment. Oh, boy. Like, no, I wanted I wanted that here. 
and I no, didn't get it. No, well, I'm fine. But that's because... That's because the next character is fucking crazy. I love Toma's route. <laughs> Toma's route's my favorite route. And I was just waiting for the crazy to drop and it didn't so i was disappointed in that because it was so crazy like the first time you watch it in the japanese and you just have this what the fuck is happening right. moment and i did and, and i know why it was coming and i knew it was coming and you know it's coming in the game like we were standing in a line at yomakon and i was like this is it guys this is it we're going in the cage we're going in the cage because i had nothing else to do at fucking yomakon in a line yeah. so i was like oh my god but like i was like waiting for it and like i got it in the game even though i knew it was coming I got it the first time I watched the anime, but I just, I didn't get that moment in the dub and I was just sad for it. But everything that you're saying is also right, that it is very genuine, that he yes. wants to protect her, that like when he's soft Toma, he's good soft Toma. But at some points I also thought Toma sounded kind of drunk. I don't know. Eh. That's just me. Nah. But yeah, I'm I'm done really. with my tiny my tiny ride on the salt train. Um, Megan and Noah. Somebody. Else. I said I was good with it. You're good, Noah. All right. Okay. Um. So if I'm gonna have to pick one least favorite performance in this whole group, it would have to be Chris <gasps> Ayers because. Oh yeah. My God, okay. Um, okay. So uh, my first impressions were not good to begin with because um in the first two episodes the whole cast is together uh, on equal grounds with each other. And in those first episodes where they go on their trip or uh, he's just having a discussion, he sounds too old. Like he's got way you're, too much age wrong. in his voice and he's got a very meh performance to it. it. It kind of sounded almost like this was dialogue from a different show that had been transplanted onto a completely different character. Mm. So, I didn't quite like that. Okay, but then when we jumped into his actual arc, um, now I'm going to agree that uh, if he had gone over the top hammy, that that probably would have killed the sincerity right. of it. But the problem is that I, I despise this character very much because he is the most controlling asshole of them all. I, I don't get sincere, I want what's best for my, uh, my childhood friend because he has a specific line where he says to her, you're really no good on your own. That is toxic male masculinity at its worst. The idea that, uh, like, I need to protect this woman because she's kind of an idiot, and I, I, if I can't control everything she's doing, I can't, you know, keep her safe all the time. Then I may as well just lock her up in a cage because that's better for her, right? Like, that makes me feel better. So, yeah, Chris's performance in this was just the most meh of the of the lead males that we'll talk okay. about. It, nothing could really salvage that even in the like the more intense scenes and I was already ruined for feeling any in, uh, sincerity in like oh he actually cares for her I'm like bullshit he cares for her this guy needs to be like taken to anger management class needs to have his balls tripped off he needs off. to go to fucking jail that's and, the and thing the he needs to go to fucking jail <laughs> but wouldn't it have been good if David Wald played him I yeah, I, I don't, don't have know. the obsession. With I, I can, if if you're looking for the crazy like I am, no, I feel he'd still I, sound like too if old I, though. If I were to put David Wald anywhere, I put him as Kent. I would well, actually we put David Wald as Kent too, but I want well, him to be crazy. We Damn. do get crazy in a different role. Who um, maybe we could uh, transition <laughs> over to. We do, we do, we do get some crazy. You know, you know. You like to stick your dick in crazy? Well, then you'll like Ukio, who is yeah, the joker boy. of our of our group. He is okay. So that was what his he uh, uh, yep his he's the card symbol was. His card symbol is the Joker. Um, he is the secret character you cannot play in the game until you beat everybody else. So you can't fuck Ukio until you fuck everybody else. So Ukio has split personalities. Surprise! Yes. Surprise, friends! You may think he's soft, but then no, it was I, Ukio. <laughs> so Ukio is played. Wow, by... that was very, very, very depressingly sad. Oh my God. <laughs> Ukio is played by Patrick Poole, and I remember talking in the My Love Story episode. He played Oda there. That I wanted to hear him play this role very badly because yeah. I loved him in My Love I Story, and I wanted to see. I wanted to see what he could do. He also plays Shiro Emya in the Fate Khalid series, and he plays Suzuki and Gotcha Man Crowd's Insight. So, you got 
plain old ukiyo soft ukiyo then you got bitch stick your dick and crazy ukiyo yes um so i'm gonna I, go first yes go First of all, one poor Air, poor uh, Andrew has just got to episode nine of Devil Man Cry Baby, so that's gonna be me in a couple hours. So if I start <laughs> crying on my Twitter, um, if you saw me crying on my Twitter on the night we recorded this, that's why. Uh, so let me go up to where I start talking about Ukio in our group chat. Oh no! <laughs> um, <laughs> Best reactions. Okay, is look, our group tall, chat. long, and crazy. Maybe crazy, but he's cool for right now. Checkerboard, yes, he's cute and notably less psycho than the other boys. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is gonna get th- no this is okay uh, see every when we got to that part in the chat no uh gg was like okay here's where the show goes to shit yep in my mind ukiyo's arc is the best part of the show yes um uh, like megan's uh, megan's otp is, is the real fast one. nothing is cute nothing is cute and pure except for kent 27 belts snossage at <laughs> ukiyo otp snossage why because she makes the boys howl and she's got the agency of a dog treat. Ushio's voice is trash, but it's really fucking funny. <laughs> um, I think that soft Ukio was a little bit bland and blah, but crazy Ukio was fun. Um, I loved crazy Ukio. Just, okay, also when he gets robbed, uh, I had to put the slime down. Just hand us the wallet, hot pants. <laughs> Snossage, you fucking God moron. That was What's adorable. that, Orion? Snossage fell down the well. God damn it. This bitch is dumber than Alba and Yui combined. So is Ukio your daddy, King Crow? Amnesia, as the moon, I want to drink my sorrows away. Because <laughs> at one point he's like, look up at the moon, it's so beautiful. And if you yeah. don't know anything in Japan, the phrase, um, as the moon's so beautiful, is like something akin to I love you. Yep. If you know, if you watch Suki Gakure, yes. Kure. Thanks, Tsukigakure. Yes. I guess Ukio wants a smoked sausage. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the building was on fire. One. Little sausage must die. Crazy Ukio has a point because I think the line says, "This little bitch has like this little sh- what the shit." I have to scroll down to find the line to find it. Uh, the exact line is, "You pathetic piece of shit. How many times has this little bitch made you taste the pain of death?" Because he keeps fighting himself to keep Snossage alive. Yep. That's the best line um, in the entire anime. Crazy Ukiyo, yeah, it is the best line. You know what? The Ukiyo arc is kind of great. It's like shitty shoujo Final Destination. <laughs> Snossage, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Hash, uh, all caps, I'm dumb, but I also sent a text message to Gigi and Lilac because I didn't want to spoil things for Noah. Um, he stabbed himself in the heart. Yep. How is he not dead? Here nope. comes the magic Otome bullshit. And then when uh, she's getting her memories back, R.I.P. Orion in his parachute pants. Um, yep. you no, know, I loved crazy ass Ukio. He this... was great. Like, I literally think that with some better direction or like getting into the show, I think Patrick could have made Ukio's like really fucking good. Like Chris Ayers to me, he was. Not the best, but he was also not the worst, but he made Crazy Ukiyo the most fun. Crazy Ukiyo yeah. by far was the most fun character in this anime. Honestly, it's let's admit yes. <laughs> I, uh, by the way, when I said Little Snossage Must Die, it's because I was thinking John Tucker Must Die, or like whatever the fuck that movie is. <laughs> that, that is, is exactly, exactly what, what it's is. called. Yep. Thank you for reminding us of that movie that all of us had forgotten about. Yeah, right. The movie that I have not seen before. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's fine. You don't have to. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> so, like, I'm kind of torn on Ukiyo because, like, I really loved soft Ukiyo. Like, the good Ukiyo, I, rub, I would rub, fall in love. Soft, soft. I, I would fall in love with soft Ukiyo. I thought he was super smooth and super sweet. And it was the thing in my love story that I wanted to see more of, which I did in soft Ukiyo. It's too bad soft Yay. Ukiyo barely does anything in here. Um, but then when he went to Crazy Ukiyo, I liked it, but it also sounded like a Vic Mignogna impression. Ooh, shit. Wow. Okay. I'm, not, I'm, assuming that's not I'm good... not saying that to be bad. I'm saying his voice, the tone of his voice sounded oh, okay. exactly like Vic Mignogna. Okay. I thought it was crazy and over the top, which is exactly what I wanted for fucking crazy as Ukiyo because... Uh, in the arc before, Ukio throws the bitch off the roof of the hospital. 
<laughs> I love that so much. And that's the bad end in Kent's route. But I was just kind of like, okay, like this is exactly what I wanted, but why does he sound like Vic Mignogna? I don't understand. <laughs> um, it was creepy enough. It was leagues above any other creepy part. He blew my non-existent creepy Toma that I wanted out of the water. Yes. Um, and I wish he were in more things that I actually watch because playing the one of the few boys in the Fate Khalid series like doesn't seem like a fun time for me to sit through, but I'd like to hear Patrick Poole more and like he was one of the standouts for me. Other than Blake, who is my lord and savior, I get on my knees every night. Whoa! Um, but Take he, me he, to church. <laughs> Take me to church. He was the other standout performance to me in here. And it's very hard to be a schizophrenic fucking character, and I think he did it to the best of his ability. Cool. You know, Gigi, I, I wish you would have, uh, you know, told us more about this before Christmas, because I could have bought you some knee pads as a Christmas present. <laughs> well, my birthday's on May 30th. Wink. Okay. Well, Wink. I really had... Okay, I gotta admit, um, I'm not gonna be fair on an analysis of Patrick, because by the time he was a central focus of the show, I'd kind of stopped caring about the acting and the, and the dub at that point. Oh. All I really had was, um, I only had one note on my piece of paper, and that was, um... What I, I, I just wrote the word mother because that's <laughs> my reaction when I, I think it was when he threw her off the uh, threw her off the the hospital room. No, I'm had that free. crazy ass look on his face. <laughs> free free it was awful, but it was so damn funny. <laughs> now to uh, to give him uh, to give Patrick fair credit where credit is due, um, he he does not have uh anything that he says that. I thought it was uh, performed badly, and he definitely brings the crazy to the bipolar nature of uh, his character. Um, I, 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 you, you were talking before about how you thought that Shin was supposed to be the Sundari character. Honestly, I think Yukio is like the literal embodiment of what of a male Sundari would be. You know, literal sweet and you know dairy dairy at the same time. So um, yeah, I don't really have anything good or bad to say about it except that. Um, make it the central point of the end of the series he did a good job and um yeah I, I do hope that we hear him in some more stuff coming up stephanie bring us home uh, patrick pool was a was another surprise to me alongside christopher Ayers. but um i actually liked the performance in general i know some people some of us were like i like the crazy one more than the soft one but I like all of it, honestly. I mean, again, going back to what I said earlier, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about the dub <laughs> because it makes the show itself more tolerable, so I'm okay with it. Dang it, Lilac, why you gotta be the nice one in the group? Because <laughs> someone has to around here. God damn. Um, but no, because um, this is, I think, the second time I've ever heard about heard of Patrick Poole in a role before and to be fair this predates Diabolical Lovers of course but um it was very interesting because I got to hear more of him and got to be more acquainted with his range a little bit more because he does have to play those two different sides and I I found it rather each side rather believable though crazy Ukyo like everybody else is fun as all hell <laughs> um but I did enjoy the softer side too because he's he's looking out for the girl that he really I, that he I loves. wanted them to get together like yeah. I believe them as a couple more than anybody else yeah me too he like he loves her so much he 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 made a wish to travel to any single timeline that she's in to try and save her like I wish the show itself was just straight that story. Because Yeah, that would have been a It would have been a good show because that relationship was so believable to me and Patrick played that Patrick performed that rather well and I loved it. And having his I'm gonna call it his evil half, uh, essentially be the antagonist of this in a sense. It's it's obviously makes a very interesting and fun dynamic and especially for Patrick 
because he has to play those two sides and the dual personality. Mm-hmm. It was, it's it's a very interesting performance, and I really enjoyed the entire thing, honestly. And I I will agree that heroin x ukiyo otp like i will agree with that statement <laughs> that is the ship i support and it is sailing as we yeah, speak yeah she better have picked that fucking joker card yes at the end please yeah right but, well there's no, a no, reason not... that you have to beat everybody else before you can get to ukiyo because ukiyo is supposed to be the true end just like in code realize you have to beat everybody before else before you get to lupin because lupin's supposed to be the true end makes sense but yeah, I thought the I true agree. end was supposed to be Finnis, but then again, in his words, nobody will love him because he's trash. But I love you, Finnis. I love you too, Finnis. It's okay. We love you, baby. Finnis Somebody protect- put that screen cap up. We love Finnis you. Finnis protection We squad. love you, baby. We love you, Finnis, BB. <laughs> but um, yeah, I All right, it. before, before yeah. we get too off track, let's talk about our last character. Oh, that should be quick. <laughs> Miss Snossage herself. Snossage, The yeah. heroine. Please, please let whoever's editing this have the word heroin crossed out and snossage written it. No. <laughs> With please. the no. picture of the box. And Gigi, you have to explain to, to us, because maybe some people here don't play video games at all. Why doesn't she have a name in this show? Heroin does not have a name because when you play the game, you put your name in there. So it makes it like you are the heroine. So when I play Amnesia, I put in Gigi. So every time the boys are talking, they're talking to Gigi. They're talking to me. They're not talking to some random girl. They're talking to me. So it's all on screen text only with like bleeps and bloops for the audio, right? No, it's fully dubbed in Japanese with subtitles. So they recorded voice actors saying every name on the planet. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, they call her Kimi, which is basically, Hey, you, Oh, okay. So, oh, they and just... they do that. They do that in the anime too. They say "Hey, you yeah, a lot," or like to avoid like the, whatever. They, were, yeah. they, they intentionally write dialogue so that they don't have to say a physical name. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, Snossage Chan is played by Maggie Fleckno. Surprise! 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 If you've listened to this podcast, you know that Maggie Fleckno plays Yui. And Diabolic Lovers. She's also what the worst might... character in Monster Musume, Meru. Oh what you, I don't what know you about might that. Not I liked know. her in that one. What <laughs> you might not know is that Maggie Fleckno also plays Minigasake, who is the very first person who has a food gasm in Food mm. Wars, who tries to take over Soma's cafe. I forgot about that. She also plays, remember how I said this was going to come back? Yep. Rachel in Red Garden. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Sawa who plays Rachel's mom. Uh, okay. You're saying that two actors who are in a Houston dub are now in a Houston, a Houston dub? dub? <laughs> yeah. What are oh the odds? God. One of them plays the other one's mom. Um, so I was not on the Food Wars episode, but um, when I watched this dub, um, Minigasake was like the best performance I've ever heard Maggie Fleckno do. Why the hell couldn't she make porno noises for Yui? Because she would have been fucking great at it. Um, so... Like, and here's my thing with her here. This was, I believe, recorded before Diabolic Lovers. Yeah, it had to have been. Probably. Heroin and Yui are very similar in a lot of different ways, except that heroin is slightly less submissive. She don't know what the fuck going on, uh, so how can she be submissive? It's not so All right, but passive, learned. incarnate. Well, okay, but here's my thing. I did not get the same, uh, what's the word I want? Fuck. Vibe? Feeling? Yes, I did not get this, I did not get the same vibe from Maggie playing heroine as I did from Maggie playing Yui, which are two similar characters. I actually believed her more here than I did in Diabolic Lovers. I actually have to agree with you on that. Which is why I gave her shit for playing Yui the way she played Yui because I didn't believe she was scared. I didn't believe that she was in trouble. I didn't believe that she did not want to be there. And I also didn't believe that she did want to be there. 
however here i got her fucking irritation Ooh, bitch was mad yeah like when she didn't know where she was like she was like confused and i was like i believe that you're confused when she like was getting pissed off at um fuck who is she getting pissed off at i think it was shin and i believed her there like i just i think she sounds her best when she's irritated whenever she's having an inner monologue or whenever she's talking to orion like when she's talking to people other than the boys she sounds fantastic her her conversations with the boys are mostly yeah okay yeah mm. but that's the fault of the script and the way the japanese was written so you can't mm-hmm. really i mean in the game you basically say nothing constantly um and in the outtakes in the diary entries <laughs> okay. she was very very funny <laughs> so I think other than the porno voice in Food Wars, this is my favorite Mar- Maggie Flecknoe performance okay. I've heard. That's Why are you, you laughing, you Noah? that one because that character does not come back ever again. The porno voice? In Food Wars, yeah. I'm sad. She was really good there. Speaking of um, uh, this character who uh, we will not refer to as Snossage for the rest of the episode. <laughs> no! I'm keeping my bit. Go ahead, but we're none of us are also going to do it. I thought it was kind of interesting that um, you really uh, you bought the emotions out of uh, Maggie's performance. Um, I thought Maggie did a great job in this. I could not have directed or uh, told someone to perform this role any better because this character is a complete idiot. It's like completely unable to make decisions on her own. Okay, like I'm watching this and I'm thinking, you know, I too have had the little thought of experiment of what would I be like if I woke up without my memories like what would uh, it, but i still had like my personality intact what would i do to try to regain my memories that's the problem is that she has no personality and i mean like literally like you were saying gg all of her dialogue is basically i uh like her favorite line is basically saying i uh dot 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 <laughs> dot and, because she can't answer anything because she's trying to hide from all of the characters the fact that she doesn't remember anything she's too embarrassed to say yeah, okay, before we go any further here, I should probably admit to you, I don't remember anything, so if you're going to try to, like, pretend to be my boyfriend, or uh, tell me that I know how to make a parfait, or try to, uh, you know, convince me that I am the goddamn Batman, or whatever, I would believe you, because I don't remember anything. So, yeah, this, uh, but she's got, okay, the important things for Maggie is that she has the right pitch, she's got the right inflection, um, it sounds a tiny bit older than I'm used to uh, anime uh, teenage girls being voiced at, but she is in uh, college, and she's also, this is an Otome adaptation. It's not supposed to be a Moe series, and it's not supposed to be a high school dramedy. She's supposed to actually be someone who's, like, gone through puberty, so a slightly lower register because she's slightly older did not faze me too much. Um, I I do hate the character's uh, passivity to a huge degree, but we're only here to talk about the performance. And honestly, for a character who has no character, I'll give full props to Maggie for consistently doing the whole acting really well. I have to... Oh, no, I'm done. I'm good. I was like, I I know I have to kind of agree with Gigi. I actually like her Maggie's performance here as the heroine compared to her as Yui. Because despite... Mm. Despite the heroine being, pro- character-wise, possibly an even flatter piece of driftwood compared to Yui. <laughs> I was waiting for it! You know it had to happen. Um, Maggie gave a lot more emotion. To be fair, it was... what I say? It was extremely soft-spoken. Like, maybe more so than Yui was. But... That's more a fault of the character, honestly, than Maggie. And mm-hmm. even then, I can see a lot more range, emotional range in her performance as the heroine than I did with Yui. It's really weird. <laughs> but it's true. Right. Like, e- even even because this show, this dub predates Diabolical Lovers 2. You, so in that regard, you would think that her portrayal of Yui would be better, but not. Um... But yeah, like between the two roles, I actually really liked her as the heroine here. It's not obviously it's not one of my favorite performances of the show. There are some small there are some small issues, mostly because she the heroine is so soft spoken and she just kind of takes everything easily and in stride. But 
that's more the character's fault, but I actually think that Maggie did show a bit more emotion for this character, and I did actually enjoy the performance here. <laughs> you can disagree all, right, I've got all the key. you want. Hold on a second. We've got the key. All right. I'm going to let you out of the cage for just a bit. Go have your romp. It's a lot better than I would have expected her to be. Um, I still don't think it's, like, super, super good. Um, yeah, I'll agree. It's... It... It's... I, 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 again, it's... How much can you do... How much can you do with a character this awful? Like, like legitimately, she has no personality. She's very dull. I will... I will admit that it is better than Yui. It's still not the super best. Um... I think it could do some work. However, I'm not going to blame Maggie. It's not the worst in the show. I will admit that she does actually show some emotions. Yeah. Besides just, um, you know, uh, oh. Passive. Yeah. Yeah. I like when she gets annoyed. And I think that Gigi was right. When she's talking to Orion, it's the best. But um, that's all I've got to say. I'll admit that there there is a little emotion when she she tends to get a little sarcastic at some points. Like, yeah. I think at one point she says that was supposed to be a joke. I don't remember who she was talking about, but th- there are like bouts of uh, slight sarcasm in there. But it doesn't break the character's personality. Like it still sounds like the same character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Maggie definitely knows that heroin is a piece of fucking driftwood because in the in in the the diary entries i looked for it on youtube so i could show it to you guys and it's not up anywhere like you kind of have to buy the blu-ray for it i'm gonna see if i can rip it i'm gonna have to rip it for you guys or something but it is fucking hysterical like her performance in that is better than her performance in the show (laughs) but i think her performance i have to compare it to yui and it's just so much better than yui is yeah um that being said, um, let's talk some quick final thoughts so you guys can get on with your Valentine's Day dates. This dub is not good. This is probably one of the worst Sentai dubs I've heard. Like, it's bad. It doesn't have a lot going for it. It's probably on the same tier of Dramatical Murder. Like, I prefer Dramatical Murder a little bit more because I like the show a little bit more and I think it has promise. Um... I think that there are some good performances. There's some stuff that I think could be shaped up. I really, really do question why Sentai, in a time where they weren't dubbing a lot of things, chose to dub this over other shows. Um, yeah. Udapri. Oh, what? Where, where is our humanity? I said yeah, Udapri. Udapri. yeah, seriously. Why the fuck did you dub this and not Utano Prinsama? Like, that would have... S- like, True legitimately, facts. I would actually watch I Udupri. Udupri. I would actually take the chance to get into Udupri if it had a dub over this. Like, I feel like I wasted, like, eight, like four hours of my day watching this show. Um, I also the- want to say that because somebody had said on um, our anime dubs on the Discord that I didn't call this out with Mon Musu, um, this show is also... As much as it is marketed towards women, the Toma route is fucking awful sexist garbage um, for both sides. Not only saying that all that girls, you should forgive the guy who throws you in a cage and roofies you, but also to guys that say, like, if you want to be a good boyfriend, you've got to roofie and cage your girl. Like, <laughs> fuck that shit. Um, it- this show itself is just, I'm sorry, GD, the, the visual novel is probably perfectly fine. Uh, if you're into it, but the show in this, the show is garbage. The show is, it is no, the show is awful. garbage. It, it's, it's garbage. I don't the think visual novel, I'm assuming, that. is better. But I feel like even as a visual novel, like as somebody who's played Dramatical Murders visual novel, I know it's not an Otome game, but it's like the one I've played. Like I feel like even that is better because Alba has a fucking personality. And I know that you're supposed to be self inserting yourself into like games like it's this is just bad. I'm sorry, it's bad. It's it doesn't make me as an advertisement want to go out and buy Code Realize. Not Code Re- Wow. <laughs> God, I hope it doesn't. 
Whoops. I do want to actually buy. Here's the thing, and I'll say this: Code Realize. I the bought anime Code Realize. Makes me want to go buy Code Realize the anime, even though my Vita is not working right now. But like, <laughs> but like, it makes nice. me want. I don't even have a PS4, it makes, and I bought. Code it makes me want to play something other than I this. Don't have it yeah, no, it does not make me like. Even even if it was in America, like I would kind of take the chance to buy Dial Lovers just to say I've played it. But like, this does not make me want to go out and buy Amnesia. This makes me want to. It makes me want to have amnesia. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Sausage right, Chan deserves to go. I'll go next because I'm going to keep mine short and sweet to the point. Like I've been saying for like the entire time, this dub actually makes this show moderately tolerable to me. I didn't have many issues. I didn't have many I did, problems with it, or I didn't see too too many flaws. There are pieces that were there are pieces and areas that were kind of that were weak in some points, but overall, cons considering I have seen the show itself before, watching it with the dub was actually decent and tolerable and okay, and I didn't have many issues with the dub, honestly. And right now, don't mind me, I'm stupid. Guess what? I downloaded on my phone. Amnesia. Yes. Nice. Do you pay thirty so bucks? I'm playing for it? that right now. No, I, I, I downloaded, there's a free version on Android. Oh, I bought the so I download, I bought I downloaded it. it on my Are you phone. Sure I downloaded it on my phone, and currently Orion is helping me search my room. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why the fuck not? We've I lost her. Who did you pick? Did here. you pick Shin, or did awesome. you pick Ken? Gee, I wonder Jiggly who Pop. I picked. <laughs> she, she picked. She picked the Waka <laughs> route. The I wish there were a walk around. <laughs> Noah, no, I, I, give, me your, give me your straight man perspective. Honestly, this series kind of fascinates me. Uh, when I first heard about the premise of this, when it first started airing back in 2013, uh, it kind of struck me as a thing like, you know what? I'd kind of want to watch that. Because the idea of taking a visual novel, adapting at least part of all the routes, and having the character sort of like relive the same time period so she can do all the routes kind of struck me as an interesting adaptation you should never ever do this and as we've seen with this adaptation that turned out to be true because it not only makes the main character really passive and stupid and also denotes the necess necessity for Orion but it also doesn't give the dub actors a lot of good stuff to work with like if we I guess um the good thing is that they did not stretch this to a 24 episode series and try to give the full arc for every character because that would have probably been kind of insufferable whereas this is short and sweet and to the point and all yeah all the dub actors were probably just not really well directed there wasn't the passion for this that there are in some other romance games it, like that's the biggest condemnation i can say of this is that it's not very romantic and i'm not sure if the game itself cranked anybody's gears or anything in terms of actually being romantic but just coming at this from a straight hetero uh uh, evil penis haver this just does not do anything for me in the romance department <laughs> but it does fascinate me in the sense that there's silly stuff that happens and i am glad that we did watch it so we could at least make fun of it and well i started this by saying that this is my least favorite reverse harem slash otome adaptation of all time i stand by this fact but i really wanted to do this episode number one so we could listen to and talk about other sentai voice actors that we have heard little bits and pieces of but here we maybe got to hear them do something different um so i'm not sad that we did that um i am sad because i kind of wanted the dub to elevate the show to a different level that i wouldn't hate it as much um and while i don't know if it was the dub or it was the fact that i've played three out of five routes in the game that made the second time I've watched this a little more tolerable. It's still the worst fucking reverse harem ever made. I'm not going to change that. Um, but, you know, it's Valentine's Day. And I take everybody into the Fujo dungeon on Valentine's Day into the cage with me. And I just wanted to spread a little bit of love. And I was feeling a little bit sadistic. And I just wanted everyone make, to hurt can like a, me. Can I make a suggestion Every for next single year? year? Hakuoki? No, can you get new victims? To I was going to vote that your, next year your, your, we actually do a good romance show. I mean, if we stick but to the same group. There aren't very many. 
No, I mean, I think it would be fun if Gigi just ropes in some of she the other guys and torments day. them for a change. She can do that on white day. No, I'm not but allowed not to do white, white day. Yeah, that's kind of Remember? the guys' thing. Like, like we, we've well, already true. picked. Yeah, the girls. Yeah. I vote that next year we do a, a good, wholesome show. But where's the trash in that? That's why I vote that you no, get no, no, other no, no, people no, no. to do we, trash. We nobody else trash. will do this with me because nobody <laughs> likes me. Oh, that's not true. Well, we're gonna we're okay. gonna force them. Now, they will have hold on, no hold. choice. That's bullshit. Look, the Fujo that's dungeon bullshit. is invitation only. Commenters, commenters, if you've gotten this far into the episode, post in the bottom that you love Gigi and that you are so glad that she dragged us into this dungeon and, and that, that you, you like hope that she me. has a great Valentine's Day now and every Valentine's Day until the end of time. And that she, that's why you're my favorite. That, that she gets a really hot guy with a really nice dick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, fam. Anyone. So that's what women right. want. That's a, you know that's a blessing. If anybody in the world deserves a good boyfriend, it's you and Steph. Aww. Wait, do they have to I share? I have to learn how to like Aww. vanilla. F no, Steph doesn't yes, share. Do. We've had that conversation before. I don't <laughs> share. <laughs> she doesn't share. <laughs> She no. likes boys and doesn't share. I don't share. We, we do high five Z's over I him. I like my nerds and my intellectuals, and I'm terrible at sharing. I mean, okay. I do like nerds. Like, I have dated nerds. If you would like to put yourself through this torture, maybe you'll see, you'll think it's so bad it's good, or you liked us talking about this for enough time that you want to check out exactly what we're seeing if you haven't seen this before you can watch the dub of amnesia on high dive streaming high dive right now is four dollars a month until they get out of beta they still don't have a roku channel so you can watch it on your phone I though they don't have a ps so yeah they have a new app they have like iphone mm -hmm. and android apps now but they don't have roku although no Roku. Let the Roku app happen, they I do, Roku. however. No PS4. One feature of the uh, of the app is that you can connect it to an Apple TV if you have one. There's an option to um, just uh, hit the have. icon. It'll Look, project I... onto your Apple t uh, TV. I I ain't that rich. No a clue. Duh. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you can watch it there. You can also buy it on Blu-ray or DVD if they still have it on DVD because Sentai is phasing out all of their DVDs. Um, maybe it's worth your three dollars if you don't want to pay the four dollars a month on high dive the world may never know if you'd like to follow us on dub talk you totally can do it on youtube at dub talk and uh, you can listen to our weekly podcast about english dubs yeah, and all this kind of stuff and it's super fun you can also follow us on twitter at dub talk podcast on instagram at dub talk podcast probably tumblr that nobody updates um, and I think that's all we have at the moment. Mm. At the moment, yes, but there's fun I know stuff at least one thing works. that Lilac has been working on behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> we have surprises, friends. We it's have plans. Robot, we have surprises, gentlemen. and it's, it's we are no, buying it's a blimp. It's not me putting roofies in your coffee <laughs> so that you'll stay in the cage and listen God to our podcast it. 24 hours no. a day. <laughs> not trying to torment our listeners stop if you want to hang out with us in our crazy crazy times that we have on the internet uh you can follow noah at noah clue on twitter you can follow stuff at lilac anime review review spelled r-e-v-u-e -E. you can follow yes. megan at queenira2 that's queenira with the number two and you can follow me at anime palooza i also have a youtube channel at anime palooza where i talk about more trash like amnesia and I unbox a lot of hot boy figures because this anime, while I do love Hot Topic Rejects, um, I don't have any amnesia figures. I wonder why they never made any. They didn't have oh, enough well. belts. Yeah, right. The belts would be way too expensive to sculpt. 27 Honestly, of them on Ken's alone. The Jesus fucking Christ. They're really, really. Oh my god, that one of them I really want. It's like yeah. $225 and it is gorgeous. Wait, I'm surprised that none of you. I, want I don't him. care. I'm just playing Amnesia right now because I'm. I'm surprised stupid. none of you mentioned <laughs> that Shin so has. Steph is. I'm morbidly. I'm morbidly curious about the game now. So I'm I'm surprised that you, know. you did not mention. None of you mentioned that Shin has two dog collars, not one. Two dog collars. What? No one. See, so it I was, was too distracted see, so by the two different color shoes. Mm. There you go. There you go. She's what? a good puppy. So She's a good doggo. Is, she's. A, 
He's a good doggo. She's a papa. No, we're not oh bringing that back. From fucking <laughs> I know Kasabi. I'm bringing it into this house on the day of your daughter's wedding. Yes. All right. So I hope you guys have a wonderful and happy and love filled Valentine's Day. May you get all your chocolate or may you give it to the person that you love the most. As always, we love you the most enough to torture you with amnesia on Valentine's Day. Anyway, that's all from us for right now. Um, So keep your belts buckled and your snossages in a vacuum sealed pack. Night, everybody. Love your faces. <laughs> what the actual fuck are you howling <laughs> for? Message, mommy. Don't forget, discount chocolate day is best day. Uh, good night, everyone. Aloha. Talk my friends. Shut the fuck right, up, Megan. I'm sending you outside. Yellow Megan here. I was actually going to make a joke that this show should be like old yeller and we need to take it out behind the barn and shoot it (laughs) oh my god and that's the end of the episode (laughs) 